edition of CISN Prep Preview, sponsored by Fairway. I'm Trent Condon. Glad to have you aboard as we get ready for week two of the Iowa high school football season and uh, looking forward to another great week headline by Valley Dowling. Before we get to that and hearing from a number of the coaches across central Iowa, taking a look back at what we saw in week number one across the state. Starting with us here at CISN, did have a few issues with servers, but want to thank you for joining us on YouTube. That's where we'll be the rest of the regular season. No cost on YouTube. You can find all the games that we'll have on CISN free video streaming through YouTube all season long. So make sure to pass it around to your friends and let them know no cost this season and we will get you up and running here with our games across the central Iowa area. To what we saw in week number one and let's start with the rivalry matchup of Ankeny, Ankeny Centennial. Going into that game, a lot of anticipation about this Hawks squad, highly ranked throughout the preseason. A lot of people thought with the addition that they had of Arlen Bruce that this is going to be a team in contention, in conversation for a state championship. Not only did they beat their rival Ankeny Centennial for just the second time since the split, they did it in dominating fashion. First play of the game goes back the other way, a scoop and score for Ankeny Centennial as they got on the board early 6-0 with a defensive touchdown. From there, though, it was all Ankeny Hawks. They did it through the air. They did it on the ground. It was a great performance. Jace Bauer was outstanding, the quarterback for the Hawks. He had four touchdowns through the air, a couple of them to Brody Brecht, a couple more to Cade Summers, and you look at that wide receiver crew. You also throw McCullough in the mix. Arlen Bruce not able to play. Didn't matter. That team is incredibly deep. Really, the question mark for the Hawks was going to be the offensive line against a pretty stout centennial team. Boy, they answered all the questions they had up front in week number one. I think you put the Hawks now in that top conversation with the uh, other teams across the top level, the Valleys, the Dowlings of the world, in conversation to be to the Unidome this year and a chance at the state championship. Mentioned the aforementioned Valley Tigers, preseason number one by many of the publications. And the Tigers got off to a bit of a slow start. It was a rough start for them to begin the season against a very young and talented Des Moines Roosevelt squad. Head coach Mitchell Moore has done a great job with that Roosevelt program. You can see the continu continued development out of them. It was the offensive line that had some issues for the Tigers. Question marks still up there on what they're going to be and what they're going to do. But you, you look at Valley, they were able to settle in the second half and really their quarterback, Jake Rubley, made a couple of incredible throws in the second half of the game, the future Kansas State Wildcat. He played at a high level, helped out in the backfield by Jaden Williams, a great running back. Valley Tigers are going to be able to score this week. Well, it'll be about the defense, and we'll get into that a little bit later on. Mentioned Dowling Catholic, who they'll face here in week number two, will the Tigers. The Maroons, it took a while for them to get going. It was a tight game at the half. Andy Nola was with them. Nip Tuck, a late touchdown by Dowling, though, spread it out to a two-score victory as they won that one 25-14. Couple of different quarterbacks for head coach Tom Wilson. He's done this in the past. Will that be the same this year, or will he be able to settle on the guy? And that's something that we certainly bears watching throughout this season for Dowling Catholic. One thing you know, you look at them in week one, two, three, whatever it is, by the time we flip the calendar into October and into November, you know they're going to be playing great football, and I think you can anticipate that's gonna be the case again this year with the Dowling Catholic Maroons. Waukee, nice performance out of them as uh, they faced off against Southeast Polk. Really good matchup on paper coming in, and, and two intriguing teams, I think, going forward, seeing what the upside is going to be. Across the rest of Central Iowa, how about the performance Ames Fort Dodge, 81-54. Now, we're not talking eight-player football. 81-54, the final in that one. Fort Dodge gets the win at home. Fort Dodge ran for 495 yards in the game. On the other side for the Little Cyclones of Ames, Taman Lipsy, who is an outstanding basketball player, ranked as one of the top 100 players in his class. Well, he's also the quarterback for the football team. He had eight touchdowns in the game, five through the air, three on the ground. He did a little bit of everything. Not enough on the defensive side, though, as the Little Cyclones fall there. Johnston Urbandale, that was another great game on Friday night. Back and forth. It was a big lead early on for the Jayhawks. Then the Dragons came roaring back, took the lead before Urbandale ultimately pulls away late in the fourth quarter and gets the victory. Two teams we're going to be keeping an eye on this season. And we mentioned the city schools at the top with Roosevelt giving a tussle to the Valley Tigers. It was a great victory for head coach Tyrone Tracy in his first game, the head man for the Hoover Huskies as they dispatch 
North and a big victory there. No game in week two, though, scheduled for the Huskies. And the question becomes now, is that going to be it for Hoover and the rest of the Des Moines Public Schools? Other schools are scheduled to play this week, but after the second week, as they go to virtual learning, the state has still said that they will not be allowed to play extracurriculars, be it football or any of the others. And with that, it could be it for the Des Moines Public Schools. Iowa City also in that mix. There's three schools there with Iowa City City High, Iowa City West, and Iowa City Liberty, and the same happening with Ames. Also, Mason City has made the decision. They have shut down the next two games as they will be going into quarantine. The Mohawks, who uh, were looking at a Week 2 matchup here, will not be playing the next two weeks because of a potential COVID case inside their coaching staff. So it'll be a two-week uh, quarantine for the Mohawks and something that is just going to be part of the normal for football this year. And we're going to be hearing a lot more about that. That's a look back at week one here presented by Fairway Stores. Glad to have you aboard with us. We're going to hear from the coaches when we come back as we continue with CISM Prep Preview. We're back with more here in a moment. Focus. To define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor, and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. At MidAmerican Energy, we put our energy into making communities stronger, safer, and ready for the future. We support STEM education and community safety, special events, and economic development activities. We energize our cities and towns just like we have for decades, all to help make your community the place where you want to build your business, your legacy, and your life. It's another way we're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Central Bank is proud to support the unmatched spirit of sportsmanship and hard work exemplified by our local athletes. We're fans of high school sports and the way the big game and hometown team rally a community. Best of luck to all of today's competitors. Play hard, have fun, and make something great happen. Central Bank, member FDIC. Prep Preview continues on CISN. I'm Trent Condon here with you. Had an opportunity to talk to the West Des Moines Valley head coach, Gary Swenson, here just a little bit ago as we get ready for the matchup with the Dowling Catholic Maroons. Here it is, Coach Swenson and myself getting ready for week two. Coach, as you look back upon it, you mentioned you know some new guys in the program. Rubley, of course, being the headliner that your quarterback and you know, Jake seeing him on the field, I'm sure just completely different. You see him on the practice field, you know he can sling it, but when the, the bullets are flying for the first time out there on a real field in a real game, your thoughts on his performance last Friday night? I thought he did well. I think everybody out there, including him, had a case of first game jitters, and I'm sure they did too, but I thought he settled in. It's kind of hard to settle in when you're when you got people in your face every time you go to throw, but that got better later and he adapted to what they were doing. And, you know, as good as he is, you you know, one guy can't win a game. I don't care what position you're playing. He needs help. And I didn't think in the first half that at any position offensively we were really at our best, but that that happens in, in game one, oftentimes, especially against a good team. But I, I think he played pretty well when he did. He hit some he hit some shots late that were really good throws. And he's, he'll get better every week as well. And he, as he starts to work with the kids that we have, 
that that always improves week to week. So I'm hoping we see a big jump this week at everybody's level of performance. Let's jump over to the defensive side of the ball, Coach, and what you saw out of their performance. Uh, I saw a m number of your guys' games last year. I loved watching to see your Washington play, but the group as a whole, what you thought out of the defensive effort? I thought they were really solid. I mean, we gave Roosevelt a lot of issues, just like they gave us. I think we're really good on the back end. I, I think we're good up front, and I think we're pretty young and inexperienced at linebacker, and I think that showed at times, but they're going to get better. They're going to get better just like everybody else is. What we'll see this week is just a much more physical downhill run game, and, and that'll test us. We're not real big, so I, it'll be a challenge for us to sit in gaps and, and play the run like we're going to have to play it. Well, let's uh, talk about the matchup with Dowling Catholic. You guys have been able to get them in the regular season a few times during this big run out of the Maroons. Ultimately, not come playoff time, though. But take us through what you've seen as you've looked at the Dowling tape from last week after they had to uh, hold off a pretty good Indianola squad in week one. Well, they're good as always. They're just solid. I mean, they're, they're big in both the defense and offensive line. They're well coached, you know, they, they tackle well. Uh, it's pretty hard to find a weakness anywhere. That game at Indianola was much closer on the scoreboard than it actually was on the field. That's just my opinion after watching the film. But it, it, they're a good football team, just like just like they always are. They've got good players across the board. They're, they're deep. Their special teams are good because they've got tremendous backup players they can use there. So that there'll be a handful for anybody that plays them. But we've had success in the regular season. What has happened as we would progress through any of those years, we just didn't have the necessary depth to either get to the rematch or to overcome the rematch. So I I, I, I think this will be a, a low scoring game, you know, and I suppose as soon as I say that, it'll be a shootout. But <laughs> I don't think so. I think both defenses are solid, so I would expect it to be a, a, a closer, lower scoring game than a lot of people might think. With that, Coach, uh, you've been a part of this rivalry now for a couple of decades. You know the importance to Central Iowa, and it's a rivalry that's known certainly across the Midwest. As you, you look at being a part of this and being part of the rivalry, what it means for West Des Moines, what it means for Central Iowa to be a part of this rivalry as you go into yet another matchup here in 2020. Well, it's always a it's always a big game, maybe bigger outside of the two programs than within. I mean, obviously, both teams, it's a focus game. The week of that game, your players are they're pretty excited to play it. A lot of the things that made it the type of game it is, is always the crowd, the enthusiasm of the people there, the, the full stadiums, no matter where it's played. That'll be a little different this year, but. Once the ball's kicked, I don't think the guys out on the field think about any of that. I think it's just a football game. So we can't ever make it bigger than it is. You know, I think it sometimes gets overplayed a little bit. It's still just a high school football game. Now, both programs have had tremendous success, so that creates a lot of interest. I think people like watching two good football teams play. And, this game usually is pretty close, and sometimes the outcome is surprising compared to what people had anticipated. But it's a it's a big game within both schools and in the West Des Moines community. So I I, I just kind of try to take it on an even keel with our team because there's there, there's no need to create a, a a hysteria among your players like this is the end of the world if if we don't win or an end all if we do win. You got to be able to recover either way and move on. You know, we're looking at four teams to follow that all could win state championships. So it, it's while it's a big game, it, it it's just another really good football team on our schedule. Well, this should be a great one Friday night, Coach, as always. Good catching up with you deep into football here, the seven-game sprint through the regular season and the playoffs right after that. Going to be a fun one and going to be a fun one Friday night. Thank you so much for your time as always. Thanks, Brent. Focus. To define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor. 
and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Trax or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WaukeeChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Joined right now by the head coach for the Dowling Catholic Maroons as we get ready for the rivalry game against the Valley Tigers. He is Tom Wilson. Tom, another rivalry week in front of us, week two. But uh, before we look forward, let's take a look back at what you saw out of your team in the victory against Indianola last Friday night. Oh, really, what we saw was a young team. Uh, you know, we came out of the shoot really pretty well. Um, and then, you know, I we, we scored early in the ball game and, and then we kind of scuffled at times. I really thought... You know, defensively, we played well throughout. Um, really, they were able to uh, score on a short field after, you know, we had a, a special teams issue. Uh, and then they got a long pass uh, later on in the ball game. But, you know, I thought Indianola played very hard. I thought we showed our youth. Uh, they brought back quite a bit of experience, especially defensively. Um, I thought that that was apparent as well. But, you know, I, I feel like getting a win, um, obviously we feel good about that, but we realize that, you know, we've got so much growing to do that it's that it's unreal and, and it can't come soon enough. Three different guys threw the football for you. You've done this in the past, uh, dealing with two different quarterbacks. Take us into the quarterback job right now. Got a young sophomore that can throw the ball around, also a senior uh, vying for playing time. What your plans are going forward at the quarterback position? Well, we're just going to keep going as is right now. And, and I, uh, Jackson Smolik, you mentioned him as a sophomore. He's obviously very talented uh, and can throw the ball, but he, he lacks experience. Steingraber's more the steady hand and the senior that's been there and been in the program and worked really hard. Um, so we're just trying to get a look at both of them right now and see who can command the team a little bit better. And you know, who, who knows, eventually we may go to one, but right now we'll stay with two and uh, see if we can move the football. Coach, during this uh, run of seven straight championships, you guys have been built seemingly each and every year up front. Tell us about the offensive, defensive lines, uh, what you're doing there, and some of the young guys seeing their first playing action at the varsity level, what you saw from them. You know, really across the board on offense, we replaced all five from a year ago, and we look much different. We're not as big as what we were. Um, you know, the one guy that we have back is Andrew Lynch, who was the tight end, who's highly regarded and is not totally healthy right now um, after last week. So that could be an issue. But, you know, those guys are going to continue to get better. Um, you know, none of them had started. A, I guess I take that back. Olsen had started a game or two a year ago because of injury. The rest of them were making their first varsity start on offense. So um, I think that's a group that has to continue to gel. Um, I, I think uh, we are have the least amount of experience there is, is really what we ever have. And uh, we're not as big as what we were. But uh, then again, you know, every team is a little bit different. So you have to figure out uh, really what you're good at and, and where you can hang your hat on. And I'm not sure at this point we've figured that out after only one ball game. Going to feel different out there at Valley Stadium coming up on Friday night uh, for, compared to what we've seen in the past. It's a rivalry game. That's always important. But with uh, not as many people in the stands. How different do you think this one's going to feel? Oh, I think it'll be, it'll be different, but I, I'm, I'm guessing the church parking lot will be full and, and people will be outside the fence. They're going to find a way. Mm -hmm. um, and we're just trying to, to navigate the situation. And that's, you know, that's been part of uh, the concern with this game, with uh, the restrictions that we're under, is just trying to make sure that, that we can keep people socially distanced. You know, Valley's been great uh, with us being on the same page 
uh, with everything and us working together. Uh, really, Mike O'Connor has worked with them to try to, to navigate that. But there'll probably be a, a different feel. But at the end of the day, it's it's Valley Dowling. And, and uh, hopefully it'll be a great ball game. I'm sure it'll still be a good atmosphere. And you know, I think one of the things that is different with the college is not playing. Um, you've got every college coach around trying to, to get into the ball game. And we're trying to keep uh, people down. But obviously, you want all our kids on both sides to get noticed if they have an opportunity to go play at the next level. So we're also trying to navigate that as well. During this run, Valley's got you guys in the regular season four different times. Ultimately, you guys have come back and won the state championship seven straight. What is it about this early season matchup that Valley has played so well and you guys uh, three and four in these matchups in the regular season, but Valley has had up the upper hand as we play in September? Well, I think the first thing is, is they've got most of the time great players and they've got great coaches and a lot of times this game can go either way. Um, it's it's kind of strange how it's turned out with them in the regular season and then us in the postseason. Um, I'm not sure I can explain all that other than, you know, both of us try to get our teams to grow as much as they can throughout the course of the year, and it's, it's worked out for us. So, you know, I, I don't know exactly what Gary does with this ball game, but, you know, for us, um, you know, you try to make it another ball game, but you know, with with the atmosphere that we usually have and the chatter that you get back and forth, it's not just another game. And you know, oftentimes, just like this year, we're young and we're trying to develop, and and uh, it seems like that we're able to develop uh, quite a bit throughout the course of a year. And and really, the recipe is the same. We just see if we can make this team as good as we possibly can. Tom, you hear rivalry, and there's a lot of times some negative maybe connotation to that. I, I've heard from years since I've been uh, calling this game and being involved in it on, on the media side of thing. It's not that kind of rivalry. It's not a hatred type of rivalry. How would you describe Valley Dowling? Well, I think you do a good job of describing it, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, I think it's well documented that I knew Gary uh, long before I took the job here and, and oftentimes would seek his counsel just on running a program. Uh, you know, I work closely with Brad Rose as an athletic director and we get along just fine. And, you know, we feel like our relationship is pretty important really for the West Des Moines and, and the metro area itself. And there's nobody that wants to win more than either one of us do um, with both schools, but yet there's a mutual respect there. Um, and I, I certainly think that that will continue. Uh, they do a great job and uh, you can't deny that. And, and we've always respected that, um, but uh, we've been able to work uh, well together throughout the course of the years. Well, best of luck in the matchup with Valley. It's going to be a fun one out there at Valley Stadium. 7 o'clock with the kickoff. Appreciate you joining us today. All right, thank you. Focus. To define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor, and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. In Iowa, we grow corn, but to us, corn is more than a cash crop. It's part of who we are. Corn supports our livestock, helping our animals thrive. Corn fuels us. Ethanol powers our state as we push towards a clean, burning future. Corn nourishes us. It gives us an abundance of good food that nourishes our families, helps our student athletes grow stronger. In Iowa, we grow corn. But the truth is, corn grows Iowa. CISM Prep Preview continues, powered by Fairway. I'm Trent Con, and glad to have you aboard as we get closer and closer to kickoff tonight. Let's take a look at some of the top games and let's start with that Valley Dowling matchup. It's one that the rivalry has been immense throughout the years. We've seen Dowling Catholic take control of the series, not in the regular season. Valley has got them three different times during the seven year championship run from the Maroons, but come playoff time, it's been Dowling Catholic each and every time. Hearing from Coach Swenson a little bit earlier and him talking about the matchup, he talked about his offense a lot and what they were able to do in week one, really settling in 
Jake Rubley getting his feet underneath him at that quarterback position. You look at a couple of the throws that he made against Roosevelt in the 40 to 20 win. He has all the tools that you're looking for, but had a whole lot of pressure at his feet. And I think that's something that is really concerning from the Valley perspective, what that offensive line is going to do against an always very physical stout front seven from Dowling Catholic. If the offensive line can give a little bit of time to Rubley and give Williams a little bit of running room, I think the advantage, at least offensively, is on the side of the Valley Tiger. The concern comes over on that other side too, what Dowling Catholic's going to look like offensively. Playing different quarterbacks as they did a week ago, three different guys ultimately threw passes in that game for Dowling Catholic. Is this the week that Coach Wilson is going to try to just settle on one quarterback, or is it going to be that system, the two quarterback system that we've seen them utilize a little bit in the past? That's one to keep an eye on. Coach Swenson said he anticipates this is going to be low scoring, slugfest, maybe a little bit ugly at times. I think you can see that. And we saw really pieces of that in week number one. Remember, though these young men have been practicing, they've been getting ready for the season as they normally do, there just hasn't been the same amount of practice time that we've seen in past seasons. Everything has been so disjointed. Individual programs have had practices cut down. You've also seen they haven't been able to do the same kind of work inside those practices that they have. Social distancing, that's a part of it. Position groups separating at different times. And you just don't see the same kind of cohesion I think you normally do with this one. I think low scoring Coach Swenson may be going to be on to something for that matchup. How about Waukee and Ankeny? After the performance the Hawks had in week number one against their crosstown rival, the Centennial Jaguars. This team is as high powered offensively as anybody that you're going to be they're going to find. But really, I think you're going to see a step up here what they're going to have to do defensively. Waukee has speed all over the place. Aaron Smith is as fast as anybody that you're going to find in Central Iowa. He's a track star. He does it on the football field. What can Ankeny do defensively to slow him down? Going to be a big key. On the other side, Coach Carlson, he's got to figure out what they're going to do against that high-powered attack of Ankeny. And what Ankeny can do is we await the decision, will Arlen Bruce be able to play a wide receiver. They'll play him in the slot. They'll probably handle the ball a few times if he is eligible. That's going to create yet another wrinkle that Waukee has to prepare for this week. I walked away week one as impressed by anybody as it was with the Ankeny Hawks, and we'll see if they can continue that here week two against Waukee. Another intriguing one was Southeast Polk and Ankeny Centennial. Can Coach Pizzetti and company get that team off the mat after a 48-6 loss to your rival. It's one thing to lose a rivalry game, it's another to lose it in that fashion. What's practice been like this week for the Centennial Jaguars? I'm going to guess not a lot of fun for those young players out there. Coach Pizzetti, he's had things to say. Both Jerry and his son have done a great job in that Centennial program as a whole, but now they're looking to bounce back. Played a lot of young guys, a lot of sophomores played in that game against Ankeny in week number one, and that development you really see accelerate just from week one to week two for those younger guys. Getting their feet underneath them, getting settled in for the first time at the varsity level. We'll see if that's going to be a step up for the Yankee Centennial Jaguars. On the other side for Southeast Polk, the Rams, they have D1 athletes up and down the field. They also dealt with their own circumstances with one of their players, transfer players not being eligible to play in the week one game. We await decisions on that also, but Southeast Polk has his talent. Xavier Nwankba is as talented of players you're going to find He's a high-level athlete, daily at the quarterback position. A lot of good pieces there for Southeast Polk, and one that both these teams feel like they need to get on the right side of things in Week 2. I think that one should be a lot of fun. Just some of the games we're keeping an eye on here in Week number 2. It continues with more than just that, though. Some other games in Central Iowa. It'll be Urbandale and Ames for Ames, possibly the Little Cyclones' final game as they will have to shut it down as they will go to completely virtual learning after this week. Des Moines East against Roosevelt, an all-city matchup. That'll be played over at Drake Stadium in Central Iowa. Johnston will be hosting Des Moines Lincoln. We'll be keeping an eye on that one tonight. Norwalk, Indianola, a little bit to the south of Warren County matchup. That should be really, really, really good there. Indianola, I think, really opened some eyes, even in a loss is what they did against Dowling Catholic a week ago. Those will be some of the games we'll be watching across Central Iowa tonight. We have you covered with three different games, Ankeny Waukee. You can catch that one here on CISN on the YouTube page, Southeast Polk, Ankeny Centennial, and of course the big one. It's Valley Dowling, 
and all the coverage here at no cost on YouTube with CISN. Make sure to let everybody know that that's where they can find it. It's powered by Fairway. That'll do it for Prep Preview here in week number two. Thanks for joining us as we get ready for kickoff across central Iowa and across the state of Iowa. We'll talk again next week. Good night, everyone. Focus, to define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. At MidAmerican Energy, we put our energy into making communities stronger, safer, and ready for the future. We support STEM education and community safety, special events, and economic development activities. We energize our cities and towns just like we have for decades, all to help make your community the place where you want to build your business, your legacy, and your life. It's another way we're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. Without question, the COVID-19 pandemic created many disruptive changes in our lives. Some of us got sick, jobs and income were compromised, it was difficult to even spend time with family and friends. But one thing hasn't changed, and that's Westside Auto Pro's commitment to quality service, and that will never change. We're here to make sure you get maximum performance and reliability from your vehicle. So as we all move forward, keep Westside Auto Pros in mind. You've been through enough. We'll make sure your car is the least of your worries. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Trax or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WaukeeChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Yes, we have simulcasting Dave Marcouli. We were doing that before uh, you retired, didn't we? Uh, uh, yes, yes, so. I was on that uh, quite a few times, actually, Mark. I prefer just you and I. You, you prefer just the radio part. I just, I like the radio. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at some of the games going on in the uh, CIML Class 4A teams tonight. Number one, Valley takes on third-ranked Dowling. Number two, Ankeny at number 10, Waukee. Waukee looking for their first win of the year. Ankeny Centennial looking for their first win. They travel to number four, Southeast Polk. Seventh rank, Urbandale is at Ames. And uh, Lincoln is at Johnston East at Roosevelt. That game at Drake Stadium. Fort Dodge at Sioux City East. Marshalltown at Newton. Council Bluffs Lincoln at Des Moines North. And Ottumwa at Oskaloosa. John Chido is on the Dowling sideline tonight. That's on the east uh, side of the uh, Valley Stadium across the way. Johnny, give us an update. A very warm night. But the shade's starting to take effect over there. Oh, no, he's just outside our... Uh... <laughs> Nothing. We're going to come back to Johnny. He's going to have to get a little closer. That's what happens when you're on that far as, side. As line. John Hayes would say, the mice have to pedal a little <laughs> bit faster. Yes, they do. <laughs> Let's take a look at starting lineups for Dowling on the Dowling offense. Marins will start at left tackle. Sam Gavin, a senior. Dominic Varelli is a left guard, also a senior. Jake Olson's the center. He's got some varsity starts last year. Uh, a 6'1", 230-pound senior is Olson and one of the captains. Gabe Carey is the right guard for Dowling, number 68, a junior. And Michael One, uh, number 51, a senior at 195, is is the right tackle. Tight end tonight for Dowling. We mentioned Andrew Lynch is out with an ankle injury. Jalen Thompson, the sophomore, 6'5", 215, gets the start uh, at uh, as a sophomore uh, tight end, and Caden Sanders will back him up. The fullback tonight is Gail, Gail Kokenauer, and the running back is Zach Swagger, and the quarterbacks will be uh, Jake Steingraber and Jackson Smolik, and Mac Anderson, Carson Brown will be uh, two of the wide receivers, along with Louis Brooks, another captain, and Koa Thompson. All right, we're set for kickoff. They're running just uh, slightly ahead of schedule. So Dave will keep it here. And uh, are you all set for Dowling Valley? You bet. Let's go. You were here last year, but you were on the sidelines, right? I was. Uh -huh. I'm ready. Dowling set to kick off. They will defend the south end zone going right to left in front of us. And here is the kick. 
High end over end kick by Diego Leon. It's fielded by Valley at the 5. Across the 15, 20, 25. Hopping to tackle. And on the return, carrying the ball up near the 35 and out of bounds is the Valley punt re or kickoff return team. Nice job that time by Jaden Williams. They're starting uh, running back. And Max Deary making the stop for Dowling out of bounds. Yeah, quite a few missed tackles there, Mark. But fortunately, Max Deary and a couple of his buddies were able there to uh, force him out of the bounds. Valley's ball on the 34-yard line. Valley offense takes the field. The quarterback is Jake Rubley, young man who transferred from Colorado. He went 11-24 last week, no interceptions for 146 yards and two touchdowns. He'll work out of the shotgun, one back in the backfield, and that's Jaden Williams. Back to throw Rubley. Works to his left, hit and dropped immediately on the catch uh, for Valley. And hit and dropped immediately is Danny Rankins, or is that Mahoney out there? Boy, Creekhauser is the one who came up and made the tackle. What a tackle. But that was just a quick flare-out pass, and Dowling read it all the way, came up and made a uh, tackle for about a one-yard loss. Great play by the Maroons. Mahoney is the wide receiver wearing number two, split out wide left. And now he's joined out there by another receiver. And here is uh, back to throws. Rubley penalty flags down. The pass is caught. A little quick hitter on the left side of the offensive line. And... Gets it up to about the 37-yard line, but this might be coming back after the catch. Yeah, it was hard to tell. It was the line judge who called it. And it's yeah. going to be procedure against the Valley Tigers, so penalty against the Tigers, and that will back them up five yards, and it will bring up second down and 15. Another key tonight, Mark, is this, these defensive front uh, Patton and, and Pettis especially need to put pressure on Rubley to force him to throw the ball because I don't think he's quite com comfortable yet with this offense uh, since he hasn't been here very long. And it's uh, putting pressure on him will help tremendously. All right, two backs in the backfield. So Rubley out of the shotgun. Toss play right side, and that's Deion Hutch. He tries to turn the corner, hit and drop in the backfield as a Dowling defense came back there. And I believe it was Danny Rankins, the other running back. Rankins with the carry, and he'll lose a few yards back inside the 25. And to give, give huge credit to Michael One, number 51, uh, the defensive end on that play. He did exactly what he was taught to do. He's got to force that play. If that young man from Valley gets outside of him, we're dead. Michael forced it back inside to his linebacker, and uh, – What'd they do? Lose more, Mark? Yeah, they lost five. Yeah, so it great job. Third and 20, Valley. Line of scrimmage, their own 23. Back to throw. Rudley wants to go long. He does go long, and he overthrew everybody. Incomplete to Matthew Mahoney, their outstanding wide receiver. Going to an Ivy League school next year, and he overthrew everyone. Yeah, and that's what we're going to see Rudley doing at quarterback. Is From what I understand, he is really dangerous going deep, and that's where he connects with his receivers. Uh, so that's where they're going to uh, try and go quite a bit, when, especially when they need big yardage. All right, Valley forced a punt on fourth and 20 from their own 23-yard line. And their punter is Dawson Stein, number 37. He's also one of the backup quarterbacks. And high spirally kick, short kick, and it'll be fielded at the 43-yard line by Louis Brooks. Now he's got to return to the right side, crosses midfield, and finally drop right in front of the Dowling bench at the Tiger 45-yard line. So the Dowling offense will start there first and 10 from their own 45. Let's go down to the Dowling sideline. Let's try to bring in uh, John Chidel this time. Johnny, you there? All right, Mark. Can you hear me now? Oh, perfect. All go right. Ahead. Okay, we got something you going. Found a spot. Well, you know what's interesting on that? First you saw three straight uh, short passes. One Valley. came back for a, a penalty for Valley. And then the running game was insufficient on that one attempt. But Dowling's defense is looking a lot quicker up front on, on the interior line. Now they certainly are, and we'll keep an eye on that. Dowling's first offensive possession. As the Maroons go three receivers, a little quick pass. Caught, and that's the tight end with the catch. And uh, a nice catch that time by Jalen Thompson, enough for the first down. And he hit that quick go route as Jalen was a slot receiver just outside the offensive line left side. Yeah, look to him to go to the tight end a lot tonight, Mark. And I think Dowling's going to throw quite a bit tonight. I, I looked for him to throw a lot of short, quick passes. So a gain of 11, first and 10 Dowling. Offset eye formation. And the quarterback in the backfield is Steingraber, and he gives it to his tailback, and that is Schwager. 
And Zach turns the corner and picks up a couple yards down near the 32-yard line. It'll bring up second down eight Maroons on the Valley. 32, no score, nine and a half minutes remaining first quarter. That was the tailback counter where they're trying to kick out with the full back and pull the guard, leave the tackle at home so he can uh, provide support on the backside. It just developed a little bit too slow, Mark. So it brings up second and eight Maroons on the Valley, 32-yard line. Beautiful night. Temperature in the uh, lower 80s. The wind out of the south, so Dowling has a win at their back. And the Maroons will send a receiver in motion. Back to throw is Steingraber. Fires in the end zone. He's got a man open, but he overthrew Louis Brooks incomplete. He had Blake Anderson go in motion, Dave. And he was wide open at the line of scrimmage, but outside the numbers. So he had a couple options there, but he overthrew uh, Louis in the end zone. Yeah, and Mac Anderson is the guy to watch. Mac did not catch a ball last week. But I'm going to make a prediction right now that he's going to have a big night. Max, an excellent receiver, tremendous speed, good kid. Watch out for him tonight, Mark. Yeah. He had a great week in practice. Third and eight for Dowling. Back to throw is Steingraber. The senior fires it out, and the pass is caught first down. And did you just not call that, Mac Anderson? I just called you it. You watched two practices, and you already got the plays down. You just don't lose too much, do you, Mr. Marcoulier? Well, I tell you, Mac's talented, and if you throw the ball, he's going to catch it. And, and I think these quarterbacks discovered that this week. Nice play, nice catch by Mac. 13-yard gain, first down Dowling at the Valley 19-yard line. Maroons have Steingraber in at quarterback. He works out of the shotgun. Jake, a 5'10", 175-pound senior. He's got Schwager in the backfield. Zach on play action, fires the pass down, and it's caught. Nice catch that time, and that is Jacoa Thompson, who had a couple catches last week against Indianola. And he gets outside the numbers, and they're going to wrestle him down inside the uh, – right about the 15-yard line. They haven't put it down yet. Yeah, and you're seeing Dowling's game plan offensively here. They're, they're going to throw short passes. Five-yard passes, five to ten at the very most. Every once in a while, throw the long one. Eight-yard reception down to the 11-yard line. It's second and two Maroons from the Valley 11. Eight minutes remaining first quarter, no score. Dowling on their first offensive possession. Here's a low snap. Steingraber picks it up. He gives it to Schwager, and he got the first down. Zach right over center, and he blasts his way for a first down and goal at about the seven-yard line. Up front, Dominic Varelli, Jake Olson, Gabe Carey, the center, Two guards, and, of course, the tackles are Gavin and one for Dowling. And the tight end is uh, Jalen Thompson. And Caden Sanders, number 36, will come in and play that spot also. And we did not see a Dowling offensive line drive like the lineman just showed us there against Valley. Great job by the interior. Swagger picks up four. Now he gets the handoff and a slow developing play, and the Valley defense makes his presence. No gain in the play. Swagger right over center, and nothing there. Yeah, Valley had a stun on through the C-gap on the back side, and he was able to get through that little opening and get Swagger before he got out of the backfield. So it'll bring up second and seven. Great pace by the Maroons. That play clock gets under 20, and they're snapping it, Dave. It's really a quick pace. And uh, out of the shotgun with uh, three backs in the backfield, back to throw a Steingraber, and he overthrew his oh receiver. Louis boy. Brooks incomplete. Louis had to come back and look into the sun because the – the field is mostly shaded except inside that five-yard line, but the pass was overthrown. Yeah, Louie took about five steps straight up field and, and went to the, uh, an out pattern. Uh, the cornerback uh, got tripped up a little bit, so Louie was wide open, but the, uh, they just were unable to connect on that play. Too bad, Mark, because that, that would have been a nice one. So it brings up second down and goals. They move the ball back five yards. It must have got Dowling for a procedure call. Back to the 12-yard line on the penalty. So it's second and goal from the Valley 12th. Maroons with three receivers left. Dowling going right to left towards the north end zone here at Valley Stadium. Back to throw. Steingraber over the middle. Pass is caught, and he's in for the touchdown. Touchdown Dowling. Tremendous pass from Steingraber. He threw an absolute bullet as he hit his receiver over the middle. Mac and Anderson. Mac Anderson, the man you talked about. That's his second catch. Yep. Watch the, out for him. Nice job. Like you called, Mark, that was a great pass. And I tell you what, he threw that ball hard, but Max got a great pair of hands, pulled it right in. 6.54 remaining first quarter. Dowling leads 6 to nothing. Calvert in for the extra point. Steingraber will stay in and hold. And the long snapper is Koa Thompson, who caught a pass during that drive. The snap is down. The kick is up. And it is 
Good. So it's 7 nothing Dowling over Valley. 6.54 remaining first quarter along with Dave Marcouli. I'm Mark Emmerdale. Back with more from Valley Stadium in West Des Moines here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. In Iowa, we grow corn. But to us, corn is more than a cash crop. It's part of who we are. Corn supports our livestock, helping our animals thrive. Corn fuels us. Ethanol powers our state as we push towards a clean, burning future. Corn nourishes us. It gives us an abundance of good food that nourishes our families, helps our student-athletes grow stronger. In Iowa, we grow corn. But the truth is, corn grows Iowa. We might not always know what the day will bring, but some things are certain. The sun will rise and your lights will go on. That's because at MidAmerican Energy, we're obsessively, relentlessly committed to providing you energy when and where you need it, to connecting with you and keeping our communities safe and strong. Because the most important thing we put our energy into is you. We're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Valley Stadium, West Des Moines, Mark Hamadale, Dave Marcoulier, John Chido. Dowling goes on a drive of their own if they took over from at the Valley 45. Nine plays, 45 yards, capped off by uh, Jake Steingraber. A uh, seven-yard touchdown pass to Mac Anderson. Jake Calvert's extra point gives Dowling a 7-0 lead. John Chido, let's go down to you on our sideline as we're right in the middle of our two-minute uh, uh, COVID break, as we like to call it, where the uh, teams are being sanitized. And they do it right after this uh, uh, this score. But, Johnny, give us your uh, your rundown on that last drive by the Maroons. That was a very, very good uh, pace with that drive, Mark, uh, other than that one penalty. Uh, but uh, Jake Steingraber's pass, it went three receivers one side, single receiver to Mac Anderson, and he he was able to get that inside release, and, and Steingraber uh, threw the ball right there on the numbers, and it was a great pitch and catch for, for the early score. But uh, what a, a, a switch from last week to this week, like Coach talked about in the pregame. Yeah, it certainly was. And, Dave, you kind of hit on it. A uh, couple different guys making catches. Back Cola Thompson five, with the catch uh, during that drive. Uh, we we mentioned uh, Jalen Thompson, the tight end, who caught the first pass of the, of the game for Dowling on offense. And then uh, Anderson with a couple catches, one for the touchdown. Yeah, and the, the offensive line also, Mark. Uh, credit them. I tell you, I saw some line drives that I have not seen even in practice. So, Dowling offense comes out looking very strong. All right, Mason Dubrava back deep along with Jaden uh, Williams. And Dubrava has it on the return. They kick it to the left hash. Dubrava, uh, sneaky move across the 35-40, and he's still on his feet and finally ran out of bounds right about the 44-yard line of Valley. Nice return by the Valley Tigers. Mason Dubrava, who we'll hear more about tonight, the other wide receiver with uh, Mahoney, and he had a nice return. You put them both back there, and – you might as well just kick it out of bounds, put it on the 35, Dave, I right. think. <laughs> that Jabrava is very slippery. He's hard to bring down. He, he broke a number of tackles there. Finally, uh, number 26, a junior, Adam Thompson, or Townsend, excuse me, was able to bring him down, fortunately, but not until he got to the 45-yard line. All right, Valley with the first down from their own 45. Tigers go left to right, north to south here at uh, Valley Stadium. The visitors are now... Uh, Rubley out of the backfield, and his pass to Mahoney, a little lateral pass. Mahoney with the catch, gets across the 45 up near midfield, and finally tackle out of bounds at the Dowling 48-yard line. Nice little uh, route that time, a seven-yard gain for Mahoney. Yeah, pretty close to the same play they started the game with, but they had much more success this time around. First time Valley is in Dowling territory tonight, and the Tigers have a first down at or a second down play from the Dowling 45. And now the give is to the tailback and handoff right up the gut, right over center, and that's Jaden Williams with the ball. The ball carry and gets down about the 47-yard line for a gain of one. The Williams is another one of the Division I prospects that they have on the offensive side of the ball. And when Valley goes to that tight pro, uh, they do like to give the ball to Williams and run the ball. Wouldn't be surprised if Williams uh, will go down with Can to Kansas State with Rubley, who has uh, accepted an offer there. Those two could end up being a oh, K-State Oh, that's Wildcat. right. He is going to Kansas yeah. State. Yes. All right. Rubley under center this time. I formation. Handoff Williams. Left side. He's stacked up. He's near a first down. He falls forward. And 
He'll, uh, it's going to be a matter of inches, Dave. You signaled first down Well, it Valley. depends upon which official. Two of them are marking it. One's short and one's long. But first down, Valley, they mark it. You were correct. That was close. At the Dowling 45, first down, Valley Tigers. At the 525 mark of the first quarter, Dowling 7, Valley nothing here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network as we simulcast. Mark Amadale, Dave Marcouli in the booth. Down the Dowling sideline is John Chido. He'll catch up with Dowling head football coach uh, Tom Wilson at halftime, so look forward to that. Tigers now move the tight end to the left side, two receivers right. And Jake Rubley out of the shotgun, bobbles the snap, rolls to his right, wants to throw, does. He threw it away, incomplete. Nobody over there. Closest Dowling defender there was uh, Carson Kriegshauser, and he had nobody to uh, defend. No, uh, again, Pettis and Patton put got through the line of scrimmage, and they put pressure on Rubley, and they got to continue to do that and get him moving to throw the ball. So that'll bring up second and 10, Valley, from the Dowling 45. Tigers will have two receivers right. One of them is Mahoney. He's slot right. And one receiver to the left. Here's a snap. And they give it to Williams. Jaden with the carry. He's stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Oh, the interior line for the Maroons. Stuffing that play. Up front, Jalen Pettis, Chase Patton, Russell Pierce at the front three along with Michael One and uh, Will Herman along with Max Derry, Jake Meyer, and Carson Kriegshauser is the uh, linebackers. Right. They're very high on uh, Meyer and Derry also. That, that Max Derry is a wrestler. I know his father, he was a tough wrestler back in his day, but you, you get those wrestlers playing linebacker and watch out. So no gain in the play. It's third and ten Valley as Williams, no gain. Back to throw rudely under, under duress. Now wants to run, runs to his right, fires the ball downfield. He dumps it off, and the pass is caught. First down Valley at the 32-yard line. Mahoney came back for the football and made a cradle catch at the 32 of Dowling. Oh, and that's too bad. Jack Myers was on an outside stunt that time. No one touched him, but he was unable to catch Rubley. Rubley broke free and completed the pass, or Mark, that would have been a 10, 15-yard loss. Yes, it would have been. Yes, it would have been, and uh, cuts off to Rubley. Jake uh, avoided the Dowling pressure, and it's first and 10 Valley. 3.50 remaining first quarter. Valley going into a, a slight wind here at the Valley Stadium as they go left to right towards the south end zone. Play action. Back to throw. Rubley has time. Fires over middle. The pass is intercepted. Intercepted by Dowling Catholic. And on the pick, it's Blake Anderson. And, yes, he goes both ways. And Blake with the pick after the ball was deflected by Mahoney, Dave. And on the coverage, I believe, was Will Herman who made the tackle who forced that ball to go up in the air and to be intercepted to his teammate. So credit Will Herman also. So Blake Anderson with the interception and Dowling with the football. With 3.38 remaining here in the first quarter, Dowling's offense will be on the field, and they're going to take their mandatory uh, sanitary timeout for COVID. So we'll take a one-minute break and return. Mark Amadale, Dave Marcullia, John Chido back with more from Valley Stadium. It's Valley Dowling, and the Maroons lead at 7 to nothing over the Valley Tigers here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Central Bank is proud to support the unmatched spirit of sportsmanship and hard work exemplified by our local athletes. We're fans of high school sports and the way the big game and hometown team rally a community. Best of luck to all of today's competitors. Play hard, have fun, and make something great happen. Central Bank, member FDIC. Hi, I'm Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and this has been a crazy year. We might just run out of furniture, but we still have a great selection right now. We have wicker, we have fire pits, we have poly, and if you want something for your deck this year, you should come see us right now. Still have the greatest selection in Iowa at the best prices. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas, just west of Homemade. Here at uh, Valley Stadium, West Des Moines, after the Valley turnover, first down Dowling at their own 17-yard line, 338 remaining first quarter. Dowling leading 7-0 as back to throw on first down. Steingraber hits the man over the middle, and it's caught. Big catch that time for Mac Anderson. 
He's inside the 20, and he's going to run out of bounds <laughs> at the 10-yard line. First down, Maroons. And Mac Anderson, after the tremendous pass from Jake Steingraber there, Dave. Atta boy, Mac. He ran an inside slant that time, and Mac... It, 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 he's deceiving. He's got a tremendous amount of spe speed. He's a smart kid, and he's a big playmaker. So watch out. Dallin Catholic all the way down to the nine-yard line. And the Maroons in business. That goes for 74 yards and a Dowling first down. The Maroons with a first and goal at the nine of Valley. And now Dowling offense looking back to their sideline. We're going to get John Chido in here. This thing is picking up after, and the Maroons are going to call a timeout. And we will take one ourselves with 326 remaining first quarter. Dowling, seven, Valley nothing. The Maroons will have a first and goal at the Valley nine when we return here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Focus, to define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Hey, we're back here at Valley Stadium. Mark Amadale alongside Dave Marcouli, John Chido. While we were away, I quick sliding pass that time for Dowling all the way down inside the five yard line with the catch and the Maroons bring up a, a, a second down and goal from the uh, four yard line Dave. Well they line Louie and Mac Anderson up on the same side. Mac ran a quick slant and Mac's the one that made the catch on that one. A nice sliding grab and they had a a lot of misdirection with that. And now Steingraber at quarterback to hand off to Swagger. And Zach bowls his way down about the uh, two-yard line. Gain a two to bring up third and goal Dowling at the Valley 2. As Swagger, who was a leading ball carrier last week uh, for Dowling in their win over Indianola uh, with 22 carries, 117 yards. And now they... Uh, that well, was right a, up the middle, but a penalty flag down here, Dave. This is all going to come back. That was a quick set quarterback sneak, and usually that means illegal procedure on the Maroons. Well, let's get John Chido in as they assess the penalty, presumably against Dowling. John, a lot has happened with the turnover by uh, Dowling forcing a turnover. Yeah, what a what a ball play by uh, uh, Blake Anderson with that one-handed interception, Mark. And the, the, the passing combinations, the route running for Dowling getting these one-on-one -on -one matchups, and, and exposing the defensive backs in bad positions there with those matchups, allowing for Mac Anderson to get free for that big, big uh, catch and run, Mark. Yeah, it certainly is. Johnny, thank you for that report. Offside on Valley. They call Valley for jumping. Yeah, that's, so that's half the distance. Third and goal now for Dowling at the Valley 1. High snap, Steingraber has it. Hand off, Swagger, touchdown. Touchdown, Dowling. Zach Swagger right up the gut. He followed his center that time. Jake Olson, Dominic Varelli, and Gabe Carey, the guards. Sam Gavin and Michael won the tackles. Jalen Thompson, Caden Sanders of two tight ends, and Dowling now up two scores on the Valley Tigers, 13-0 Maroons. Great run by Jack Swagger there, getting behind his blocking, and the key is he kept his feet moving, which is critical. Nice job, Dowling offense. Holy cow, Mark. Well, we bring you out of retirement, and this is what we have. Wow. Up two on the Valley Tigers. You know these two teams played for a state title last year. Well, you know what? And they <laughs> played two games ago, right? <laughs> yes, they did. That's two right. games ago. Extra point by Calvert is no good. So the score remains Dowling 13, and the Valley Tigers nothing. 228 remaining first quarter. Back in one minute from Valley Stadium in West Des Moines. I'm Mark Amadale. Dave Marcoulia joins me, John Chido, here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. In Iowa, we grow corn, but to us, corn is more than a cash crop. It's part of who we are. Corn supports our livestock, helping our animals thrive. Corn fuels us. Ethanol powers our state as we push towards a clean burning future. 
Corn nourishes us. It gives us an abundance of good food that nourishes our families, helps our student athletes grow stronger. In Iowa, we grow corn. But the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Trax or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WalkieChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WalkieChevy.com. at Valley Stadium, West Des Moines, as Dowling goes four plays, 83 yards, capped off by a Zach Swagger one-yard run. Dowling 13 to nothing over Valley. His extra point was no good. The big play, Dave, Mac Anderson's 74-yard reception on first down to put Dowling deep in Valley territory. Here's a kickoff by Diego Leon, and that drives uh, Williams deep to his five, and on the return, he's going to be swung down as he crosses the... Uh, 20-yard line is a nice return that time by Valley and tackle Adam Townsend. By he's, Townsend. Uh, he's two for three. Yep, he's the, he's the third running back in this uh, yeah. group, and he's doing his mark, making his mark. Very on special nice teams. job. Let's go down to Dowling, uh, Dowling sideline, which is on the east side of the stadium tonight. Now in the shade, and that is John Chido. Johnny, a big play that time, Mac Anderson to get Dowling and in deep into Valley territory to set up the touchdown. Yeah, that was an excellent drive for the for the Maroons. Uh, the passing game has been very efficient tonight for them. This is a big uh, possession for Valley. Uh, they need to get some type of points on the board, some type of rhythm going with their offense. On their own 22-yard line, they hand off to Jalen Williams, and he's hit and dropped Jayden right Williams at the line of scrimmage. Barrier. He turns the corner and hit from behind as Williams couldn't get unleashed. And Davey had some maroon, a little wall set up on that right side, but dragging him down from behind. Jalen Pettis caught him from behind, and that, that's good. You do not want to let Williams get outside or you aren't going to catch him. Uh, Jalen Pettis did a nice job shooting his gap, getting in the backfield and making the tackle for no gain at all, Mark. Yep, second and 10, Valley on their own 22-yard line. Dowling, 13, Valley nothing. Final minute and 50 seconds left here in the first quarter. Quarterback is Jake Rubley for Valley. Swings the ball out of the backfield, and it's incomplete. Try to hit Williams with a little uh, swing pass to the left of the formation and let him a little too far. Incomplete. Well, that sure looked like a fumble almost to me, Mark. Didn't that look like a backwards pass to you? It was pretty close. No. Valley came no. up with it. No. Now I know you've been away and on, no. on the motorcycle too long. Come on, this is Valley, Mark. <laughs> you, you have a different set of eyes when you play Valley. <laughs> Remember, Joe, remember our, our listening audience, Dave, the, the guy who uh, gave away his daughter but missed the rehearsal dinner. Well, you went to most of no, it. No, I You stayed. didn't eat dessert. Uh, no, I ate. Right over I there. Ate, I ate my hamburger and left. <laughs> <laughs> to coach in a Dowling Valley game, that's dedication. All right, for Valley, it's third and ten from their own 22. Back to throw, Rubley on play action. Now being chased, undumps it off, incomplete. Threw it into space. Williams was there, but nobody else. Pass incomplete. I'll bring up fourth and ten. Valley from their own 22, and this Dowling defense has just been stifling in this first half. Well, they set up the screen pass there, and Russell Pearson came through, and uh, he was not fooled by Rubley. Rubley backpedaled much further than he wanted to, and by the time it came to throwing the ball, uh, there was no one there. It had just broke down. Dawson Stein into punt. He'll stand back at right around his 10-yard line, gets it away. A low kick, fielded at midfield by Dowling and hit and dropped on the return for the Maroons is Blake Anderson. And uh, that will move him back to the 48-yard line. That's where Dowling will start moving back to the 46-yard line. We want to thank Ashworth Vision, Construction Professionals, and Dental Associates for sponsoring the game on Iowa Catholic Radio. And if you're watching the game tonight on CISN, you'll see their ads throughout on the screen. Let's go down to Dowling's sideline, and that is where John Chido is. Uh, Johnny, give us an update before the Dowling offense takes the field. Well, that Valley's trying to get uh, more laterally and get, get their uh, position players in space with the football, and they're Jackson's unable to connect on that screen pass and other little short routes, and, and, and Dowling's defense has been in great position to, to, to shut the, the Valley offense down. Yeah, and one of the big plays was uh, Pettis, and now Smolik in at quarterback, fires a pass across the uh, uh, field, and a pass is caught by Louis Brooks, but uh, for a short gain, maybe up to the 48-yard line for a gain of two, as uh, we're seeing the Dowling sophomore in there right now, Jackson Smolik, 6'2", 
180 pound sophomore and he threw he's got a nice arm Dave you saw it there yeah he can really throw the ball and you know Mark I was focusing on the offensive line that play and there was absolutely no penetration at all by the Valley defensive line so that line is stepping up Brooks with his first catch tonight. Smolik back to throw. Now wants to run. Scampers outside the pocket. Rolls to his left. Fires with his right hand down. Field pass incomplete. Overthrew Louis Brooks. Also had a receiver down there in Jake Anderson, but he overthrew them both incomplete. My uh, valley, my valley eyes saw a lot of pushing on that play, but uh, <laughs> of course you uh, did. Yeah, they uh, Smolik really had to scramble quite a bit, and he threw a nice. Uh, pass, unfortunately running the wrong way, which makes it a difficult pass, and Brooks was unable to come up with it. Uh, the official stop play, they did not, uh, yes, they are set a five-yard penalty now being assessed to Dowling, and they'll move the ball back to the 42-yard line. Uh, John Chido, did you see what the, that was about? Because we didn't realize there was a penalty flag thrown on the play after Smolik was scrambling. Yeah, they're calling an offensive lineman downfield. Uh, okay. Second and 13. So, oh, it's an eligible man down field for Dowling. It'll back the Maroons uh, to their 43-yard line on the penalty after incompletion. Diamond backfield. Back to throw Smolik. Fires it out. The pass is caught. Louis Brooks with the first down inside the Valley 45. Steps out of bounds at the 42 of Valley. Well, he has so much speed. It's obvious the cornerback for Valley is taught don't get beat deep because he was backpedaling, and he had a five-yard cushion, 10, 15 yards downfield, Mark, and he cut it off to an out wide open, perfect pass. A nice uh, spot that time because uh, Smolik had to throw it before Louie made his turn. Right, and that's beautiful his, work. So it's first down Maroons, first and 10 at the Valley 42, Dowling leading 13 to nothing. Here with 37 seconds remaining in the first quarter from a beautiful night at Valley Stadium, the sun is set, and... Uh, Lights are on, but we don't need them. Smolik back to throw, fires it out. The pass is caught by Koa Thompson for a short game, kind of a quick stick route to the left side of the formation. They'll spot him down at the 38 for a gain of four. And Thompson just takes a couple step and turns, and, and Smolik got his read and selected Thompson on that one. Certainly did. Tonight's game on Iowa Catholic Radio brought to you in part by Kemen, Mercy One, and Skeffington's Formal Wear. Alongside Dave Marcouli, I'm Mark Amadale, John Scheid on the Dowling sideline. We've come to the end of the first quarter with the score. Dowling Catholic, 13. The Valley Tigers, nothing. Valley ranked number one. Dowling ranked third. Back with the second quarter in one minute here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 tracks, or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WalkieChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WalkieChevy.com. Obsessively, relentlessly. That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away, delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. And we're back here at uh, Valley Stadium, West Des Moines, as we start the second quarter. Dowling Catholic leading 13 0 over the Valley Tigers. My name is Mark Amadale, joined by Dave Marcouille tonight. And John Chido on the Dowling sideline. Let's go second down to Johnny six. before we uh, the start the second 30. quarter. Johnny, uh, give us an update from the Dowling sideline. Well, Mark and, and Coach, uh, it's a lot different story than last week for the Dowling Maroons offensively. There's more, more of a fast pace, uh, more efficiency with their offense. Defense has been stifling. Uh, they left off just like they left off last week. 
Valley's yet to get anything going offensively, Mark. They certainly have. And on second and six, Smolik out back to pass, fires it out, and he's got a man right at the first down marker. He's driven back right at the 32-yard line. They're going to give him the first down. Was that the tight end there? Uh, Dave, we'll have to see. You know, uh, Dowling offense is going to so many quick passes and short, short passes, very little run in the series, Mark, that – Valley's defensive line is just starting to stand up and not get any penetration at all. Six-yard reception that time for Jalen Thompson. First down, Dowling at the Valley 32. Dowling 13 and Valley nothing as we're underway here in the second quarter. Dowling will go from left to right, north to south here at the uh, Valley Stadium. Maroons in their home maroon uniforms, white pants and numbers. Back to throw Smolik on play action. Has a man wide open. He overthrew him. Incomplete to Mac Anderson and went right through his hands. The ball was high on a quick post route from the right side of the formation, David. Well, it was a little bit high because they uh, Valley came with a full stunt that time, and they got in on the two corners, uh, putting a lot of pressure on Smolik, forcing him to throw that ball, and he couldn't really follow through. Too bad because Mac Anderson was wide open on that play. He had no safety help. It was just him and the corner. So it's second down and 10, Dowling. And now Smolik back to throw, fires the ball out. The pass is caught. That is uh, Koa Thompson with the catch, and he's run out of bounds on the far sideline on the Dowling side right at the 20-yard line. That's a pickup of 12 yards and a Dowling first down. And Thompson inside receiver that time running an out pattern. Nicely thrown ball and a nice pickup for the Dowling Maroons. First and 10 Maroons at the 20-yard line as Dowling now in the Bozen the Flores red zone. Say more with Bozen. 515-244 Rose. Bozen makes the moment mean more. First and 10 Maroons. Ball at the Valley 20. As Smolik on play action, fires the ball to his right, and the pass is knocked down incomplete. Great job by the Valley defensive lineman who hit and uh, slapped it down. Nice job by the Tigers that time, and that's an incomplete pass. Yeah, he came up from the outside again to pick up Brooks. That time they lined up with Mac Anderson on the right side, split clear out one-on-one -on -one coverage. I thought they might look for Mac out there, but Louis Brooks came and was underneath, and the selected the read said go to Brooks, which he tried to do. All right, offset eye formation in the backfield. Smolik at quarterback. Mac Anderson split wide to the left, top of your screen as a receiver. And the handoff goes for the first time tonight, and that is Cam Middleton, the backup tailback. And he angles his way out of bounds inside the 15. I think we're spotting right out of bounds at about the 12. Uh, nice move by Cam Middleton. His first carry of the night as they alternate him and uh, the, the, the tailback, Zach Swagger. Came back with that counter. Nice blocking by the fullback, uh, Schwager, who I believe is in there at fullback on that play, and the backside guard pulls. Seven-yard run for Middleton. Third and three, Dowling. Line of scrimmage, the Valley 13. And three receivers right, two to the left. Smolik over the middle, fires a pass. It's incomplete. He threw into coverage that time as the intended receiver was Mac Anderson, but well covered by the Valley defense. And that, that corner there was one-on-one -on -one with Anderson, and he had him well defended. Yeah, he really did. Uh, he was all over Mac on that play. So that's going to bring up a, a field goal attempt for the Maroons. This will be a 30-yard uh, field goal attempt by Jake Calvert. The snap will be from Koa Thompson. The holder will be Jake Steinbraber. And the ball is down. The left-footed kick by Calvert is up, and it is good. So Dowling extends its lead to 16 to nothing over the Valley Tigers with 10-27 remaining here in the second quarter. Here. We'll take First. a break and come back with more from Valley Stadium here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Godfather's Pizza's Autumn Feast. A medium specialty pizza, a medium pepperoni pizza, and my new caramel apple streusel with Twix candy pieces. Get yours today. Focus. To define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. At MidAmerican Energy, we put our energy into making communities stronger, safer, and ready for the future. 
we support STEM education and community safety, special events, and economic development activities. We energize our cities and towns just like we have for decades, all to help make your community the place where you want to build your business, your legacy, and your life. It's another way we're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. 16 to nothing on the 30-yard field goal by Jake Calvert. John Chido on the Dowling sideline. Nice little drive by the Maroons, but they ended up settling for a field goal instead of getting points or uh, getting a touchdown out of that, Johnny. Yeah, I want to go back to that batted ball by Nasir Washington because Jalen Thompson was wide open, Mark, and uh, that batted ball prevented a, a Dowling touchdown. And here is a squib kick by Dowling. I was wondering if they were going to do that, Dave, as uh, the squib kick fielded by Max Barr of Valley, and he'll down it right there at the 23-yard line. But go back to your point there, Johnny. Yeah, uh, when yep. they brought Louis Brooks in motion, and they and uh, Schmolik tried to uh, throw the pass over the middle. He's going to to uh, Jalen Thompson, who was wide open. And Nature Washington, uh, I believe, is the defensive end for Valley, made a great play to bat that ball down. So the Maroons lead it, 16 to nothing. The Valley Tiger offense on the field with 10:27 remaining here in the second quarter. Out of the eye formation, they'll give it to Williams. He's smothered under. He'll get nowhere. Had a fullback in front of him, ran the eye play to the right side, and a bunch of maroon jerseys knifed in there and made the stop. And, Dave, you're going to have to call him out because there was three or four Dowling Maroons in the backfield. Well, yeah, I'm going to give Carson Kreekhauser uh, credit on that, Mark. But, they're, like you said, the whole right side. I bet Patton and uh, Pearson were also probably in on that play. They just really crashed down on the right side. So it brings up second down and 14 for Valley. As the line of scrimmage was the 24-yard line, it's been pushed back to the 20-yard line on the loss. And here is a Rubley back to throw, fires it out. Nice uh, catch that time by the receiver on the near side. And that is uh, the first catch for Cale Nesheim on a... He was a slot receiver to the left, and he gets it across the 25 up to the 27-yard line. You know, Valley has uh, two Division I receiving prospects. Their tight end, Eli Reardon, who is 6'6", 220, uh, Division I prospect, has not been offered yet, I do not believe. His brother played for Nebraska, has not touched the ball yet tonight, Mark. Yeah, yet is the key word there. All right, two receivers to the right, third and six. Rubley out of the shotgun, back to throw, loses his footing, but fires out, and it's intercepted! Picked off by Dowling! On the interception that time is Carson Kriegshauser, and he'll be brought down right about the 33-yard line of Valley and another Tiger turnover. Oh, Kriegshauser played that ball beautifully. He got in his drop, right in the drop zone, and uh, made a great catch. Maroon's ball once again, Mark. Uh, this Dowling defense has, has looked good all year, and, and coming into the season, Mark, they knew the defense had to carry the offense for a little bit, but, boy, they aren't carrying them more than one game, are Unbelievable. they? Unbelievable, and what a move that time. And, uh, John Chowder, you were right in front of that. Kriegshauser had that ball read that Rubley threw. Oh, I mean, he, he dropped right what Coach said. He dropped right into that read in that zone, and the ball was thrown right to him and made a great play. But right. the defensive line did the pressure that made that happen. Here's Smolik thrown in the end zone, and now Touchdown. it is a uh, two. Both of them come down with it. Now the officials got to get involved. Louis Brooks came down with it, and they're going to give it to uh. Valley as the Valley defender there got in front of Louis Brooks, and they wrestled to the ground, and they're going to give it to the Valley Tigers. So one in, one turnover deserves another, and the Tigers will take it first and 10 of their own 20. What a jump ball <laughs> well, that was. Not, we don't have a replay, Mark, but I, I believe people watching at home right now are going to see a replay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I couldn't tell from here. So it, it was just too hard to see. So Valley will take over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. A jump ball in the end zone. John Chada, you don't see that too often. And when you do, it usually comes down in favor of the offense. They rule offense, but the defender for Valley ripped it away. Yeah, Jabrava, that was a 50-50 ball, Mark. And, and uh, Jabrava was able to, to, to get it away from Louis Brooks there at the end in the scrap-up. But uh, what a great play by the defensive back for the Valley Tigers. Yeah, it certainly was. And that is uh, Mason Dubrava, the uh, 5'9 senior, and now... Valley back to the ground game and first and 10 from the 20 
And no gain on the play. Williams with the carry, and he is having tough going, finding any sort of hole for this outstanding running back for the Valley Tigers. And you know they really aren't blocking the outside ends for Dowling Catholic. They're thinking Williams can make it up in the middle quick enough. But Russell Pearson, that's about the second or third time we've seen him crash down hard and make the tackle from the backside. So we'll bring up second and 10, Valley. It's 16 to nothing. The Dowling Maroons leading the Valley Tigers. 8-15 remaining here in the second quarter. The game clock continues to run. And back to throw now is Rubley. Looks to his left, fires it out. The pass is incomplete, broken up nicely by the Maroons as the intended receiver for Valley was Eli Reardon, the guy you just took, talked about earlier. Had the ball in his hand, but stripped away at the last moment, incomplete. And coverage by Will Herman on the play. Will did a nice job getting out on his coverage to break up the play. So Just third and long big again. third down play here, Mark. Third and ten. Third and ten for the Valley Tigers. They'll send two receivers to the left, one to the right, one back in the backfield. That's Williams. And Rubley back to throw under duress, and he's trying to slip a tackle, and he won't. Down he goes. The Maroons come in there, and they sack Rubley back at the 14-yard line. The Tigers are forced to punt. Rubley cannot get anything going as the uh, Dowling defense has been the name of this first half. Boy, and there are a number of Maroons in on that play. We had a stun on that time. He was able to get loose, and... It's just unbelievable. It was very hard to, to pick up the number on that one. John, you may have been able to see. Yeah, it was uh, Max Deary on the blitz. Yeah, he did a great job shooting that gap. And you knew he wasn't getting away because uh, Deary's a pretty good wrestler. Now here's a punt by Valley. Brooks with it at his own 46. Up the gut. He goes across the oh, he, he might oh. go down the near sideline. Brooks puts a move on the punter. Touchdown. <laughs> 54 <laughs> yards. And Louis Brooks ah. lights it up, and Dowling now up 22-0, pending the extra point. And how about that guy? Louis was not going to let a kicker tackle him, I tell you that right now. No way. Beautiful return by Louis Brooks. Touchdown Maroons, a 54-yard punt return by Louis Brooks. And Dowling now has extended their lead to 22-0 as we have 7-12 remaining here in the second quarter. Dave Marcoulier. Unbelievable, oh, Mark. This is quite the night. Calvert now in for the extra point for Dowling. The hold by Steingraber, and it's a low kick. It's up, and it is no good. No good again. So it's 22 nothing Dowling. We'll take a one-minute break and return to Valley Stadium with uh, number three Dowling leading number one Valley with 7-12 remaining second quarter here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 tracks, or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WalkieChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WalkieChevy.com. Central Bank is proud to support the unmatched spirit of sportsmanship and hard work exemplified by our local athletes. We're fans of high school sports and the way the big game and hometown team rally a community. Best of luck to all of today's competitors. Play hard, have fun, and make something great happen. Central Bank, member FDIC. At uh, Valley Stadium, Mark Amadale, Dave Marcoulier, and, of course, John Chido on our Dowling sideline tonight. Let's go down to John. Dowling leading 22 nothing, and, Johnny, you can't get – we talked about special teams a little bit with Coach Wilson in the pregame show, and there was a big special team play. Louis Brooks, a 54-yard punt return for a Dowling touchdown. Yeah, not only that, Mark, but think about this. He just lost a 50-50 ball that uh, Valley re that intercepted, and he comes back. And the next time he touches the ball, he brings it to the house for a touchdown. I mean, that's a ball player. Yeah. Uh, that, what, what a great play. Well, this team's grown up a lot, uh, John. We saw them in week Here one. You go, Leo. And you got to hand it to the Valley Tigers or to the uh, Indianola Indians. They gave Dowling everything they had. Uh, led in the first half, led in the, th in the third quarter, and the Maroons pulled it away. 
But uh, the Maroons learned a lot from that Jayden game, John. Williams. Yeah, they sure have. And defensively, uh, the, the blitzes Danny that they've Rankin been sending in, in Valley's offensive line is, is not being able to count for, for these blitzes coming off the edge. The last time was Max Deary uh, through the middle on that Mike Phil blitz. And and uh, the, the old line for uh, Valley is having a hard time picking up uh, where these blitzes are coming. That's true. Well, Diego Leon will kick off for Dowling. He kicked the swip kick last time. He'll do the same. Takes a couple bounces. They'll let it go back to the uh, eight-yard line, picked up by Williams, and Jalen with it across the 20. And he stood up right about the 25, 27-yard line. They'll spot him down. First and 10, the Valley Tigers from their own 27-yard line. And it has been all Dowling tonight. 22-0, 7.05 remaining in the first half. Our halftime guest will be the president of the Catholic Football League. Andy Jepson will join us here at the uh, press box at Valley Stadium. But, uh, Dave, the Dowling defense, you you've, you you picked the right game to come back on. I'll tell you right now, you got to love this. Well, you got to love the Dowling Valley game, especially when Dowling's up 22 to nothing. <laughs> and when Valley is just loaded with Division One athletes, uh, this is just a real shock. First down, Tigers. The line of scrimmage, their own 28-yard line. And now the inside handoff, and they give it to Williams, and he stood up the line of scrimmage. And that front four for Dowling is uh, Jake Rubley hands it off to Jaden Williams, the Valley ball carrier on the play. Up front for the Maroons, Pettis, Patton, Pearson, and uh, Michael One, all up front for the Maroons. Craig Hauser, we've called his name. He's got a pick tonight. Well, I know Roosevelt held Williams to one yard the first quarter, and then he kind of uh, broke loose, and he ended up with a – uh, over 100 yards last week. But I tell you what, Dowling is really keyed on him, and Williams has not been able to do anything. Second and 10, or second and eight, rather, Valley. Tight end on the left. They go to the running formation, handoff Williams, cuts it across, and is across the 30, up near the 33-yard line. He'll pick up three, and will bring up third and five for Valley at their own 33-yard line with six minutes, 10 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Dowling leading 22 to nothing over number one Valley. And Will Herman coming up again to make a solo tackle. And Mark, I tell you, we've called Will Herman's name all night long so far. He's had a tremendous first half. Did you hear uh, Coach Bossman in the, press, the box next to us uh, cool. calling out signals? He's got one called out here. Just keep an eye on this play. All right, third and four. <laughs> <laughs> for for Valley. Tigers go with a bunch formation to the left. Rubley under center. And one back in the backfield. That's Williams. Back to throw Rubley. Looks left. Looks over the middle. Fires it out. And the pass is caught. Beautiful pass. And I think he hit Reardon his tight end. The pass is, in, is complete. And that was not Reardon. That was Drew Henderson with the reception for a first down. Nice play. But I tell you, I didn't catch the number. But someone put a shot on Rubley. And uh, I think he's finding out what this Dowling Valley series is all about. He sure did on that play. Well, he placed a pretty good ball out there in Colorado before they shut it down for the year and he transferred here. And, uh, you know, his, uh, he's got family members that went to, to school here in Davenport area, Iowa State, and did very well. So he's cut this from a pretty Iowa, good cloth. This is Iowa, though, Mark. Come on. <laughs> he's cut from a pretty good cloth. He's not, this is not the high altitude, Dave. He doesn't play at that high altitude out there. All right, Tigers with the first down right at midfield, they'll call it. 16-yard catch to Drew Henderson. That's his first. And we got a timeout called by Valley. We'll take a minute break. Five minutes remaining here in the second quarter. Dowling 22, Valley nothing here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. In Iowa, we grow corn. But to us, corn is more than a cash crop. It's part of who we are. Corn supports our livestock, helping our animals thrive. Corn fuels us. Ethanol powers our state as we push towards a clean, burning future. Corn nourishes us. It gives us an abundance of good food that nourishes our families, helps our student athletes grow stronger. In Iowa, we grow corn. But the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Hi, I'm Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and this has been a crazy year. We might just run out of furniture, but we still have a great selection right now. We have wicker, we have fire pits, we have poly, and if you want something for your deck this year, you should come see us right now. Still have the greatest selection in Iowa at the best prices. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas, just west of Homemade.
And we're back here at uh, Valley Stadium. Back to throw is Ruby. First and ten from midfield. He goes down and he gets it away. Pass is caught. Nice catch that time by Nesheim. Kale with the catch in traffic. And I'll tell you what, Rubley took another shot there, David. Yeah, he did. He's getting a lot of pressure. That was a flanker screen. He started wide and came inside. Nicely run play by Valley. And a four-yard reception for the Tigers. Second and six now as we have four and a half minutes remaining. Here in the second quarter, Dowling 22, the Valley Tigers nothing. Mark Amadil, Dave Marcoulier here in the press box on a beautiful night here at Valley Stadium in West Des Moines. And John Chido on the sideline. And now here is an end around. They're going to give it to Mahoney. Matthew Mahoney trying to turn the corner. Gets outside the numbers and finally tripped up near the 45-yard line. Let's see where they'll give him forward progress. Maybe a, a yard on the game. And I believe it was Max Deary who got the initial shot. Will Herman also out there and one of the cornerbacks. But um, Max, another outstanding linebacker who can really run from side to side. Tonight's game in Iowa Catholic Greater brought to you in part by Ashworth Vision, Construction Professionals, and Dental Associates. Mark Amadale and Dave Marcoulia here in the press box. John Chido on the sideline. Ruby back to throw. Fires it out. Pass is caught near a first down. And they may give it to him. They're going to stop the clock and give the uh, Valley receiver. And uh, nice reception that time by the Valley Tigers as they're starting to gain a little momentum. And that was uh, Jake Anderson in. Jake is uh, Mac Anderson's younger brother. He's a sophomore in getting some reps at cornerback, coming up nicely to make the tackle. Benke with the catch. Eric Benke, the uh, 5'8 senior, back to throw Rubley on first down from the 40-yard line. And the, the pass is uh, caught nicely that time. That's Nessheim with the second catch in this series. Valley starting to get their passing game, no huddle game clicking for them before the end of the first half here. Nine yard gain for Nesheim. He had a four yard catch a couple plays earlier. It brings up second and one. We approach the three minute mark here of the first half. Timeouts remaining. Uh, Valley has two and Dowling has two timeouts at their disposal. And they're getting down to under 10 eight seconds. seconds. They need to get this play going. Two receivers left, one to the right. Rubley out of the shotgun has two uh, running back in the backfield, and he's going to be hit and dropped. Dropped again in the backfield is Rubley. Back at the 35-yard line, he'll lose four yards, and it'll bring up third and five for the Tigers. Well, Max Derry came on that same stunt again, coming up the middle, and uh, Herman also. But uh, Derry is really getting around on the field, and I put a lot of pressure on him. That's his second sack of the first yeah. half for Derry. Yeah, he's done a nice job. Ruby was under tremendous pressure there. He couldn't do anything. It all starts up front for the Maroons. Patton, Pearson, Pettis, and one. And Krigshauser. Linebackers, Derry, Herman, and Meyer. All right, third and five, Valley. Shotgun formation, Ruby. He'll give it to Williams, the tailback. Hand off right side. Tries to turn the corner. Can't. Hit and drop right about the 33-yard line. He'll gain two. It'll bring up fourth and two. And decision time for head coach Gary Swenson and the Valley Tigers. And that was Russell Pearson again getting outside and not letting Williams beat him outside, forcing him back inside to his buddies to help him out and make the tackle. So I credit Russell Pearson on that play. Three-yard gain for Williams. Fourth and two, Valley. Line of scrimmage is the Dowling 32. Minute and a half, the game clock continues to run here in the second quarter, and the Tigers are going to call a timeout. We'll take a one-minute break. Minute 23 remaining in the first half. Dowling 22, Valley nothing here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 tracks or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WaukeeChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Obsessively, relentlessly. That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away, delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile, regardless of the times. 
our team remains committed to you. At uh, Valley Stadium, West Des Moines, Mark Hamadil alongside Dave Marcoulier as our score is 22-0, Dowling leading Valley. Tigers took the timeout. They have one left here in this drive, Dave. A minute 23 remaining in the half. Valley looking for points. And fourth and two on their the Dowling 32. And Coach Swenson, field goal, go for it. What do you think, Coach? Oh, I, you got to go for it. Down 22-0. I, I definitely go for it at fourth and two. And that's what the Tigers are doing. Two receivers right, or two to left, rather, two to, and now we've got a timeout, Dowling. So we'll keep it here. Minute 23 remaining in the first half. Dowling uses their second timeout, so each team has a timeout left. And the Maroons with a 22-0 lead. And, uh, Dave, this has been uh, quite the, uh, the year. And you, you look at the transition, uh, getting ready for a season. I know we had baseball and softball here in the state of Iowa, but you've been retired, retired administrator, retired coach, uh, what am I missing? Coach, administrator. Oh, and a principal, teacher, administrator. Yeah. What, this has to be interesting just to be a coach, just to be in those positions as a school teacher. And here you can't work with your team. You don't know. You know, you can't have a, a contact, and then you got all that stuff. Talk about you're on the outside. I know you talk with administrators. This has to be different for guys like uh, Gary Swenson and for Tom Wilson, the two head coaches here, preparing for a season like this. Oh, absolutely. It's just as difficult as it is inside the building as it is outside with these these coaches, especially a football coach where you have, what do they have, Mark, 80 kids? I believe Dowling might have 80 kids Dowling on the team this year. The, the most participating in sport. Johnny's going to give us yeah, give try, update. Trying, trying to manage all that unbelievable. difficult to do, but Valley is lined up ready to go, so I better be quiet, all Mark. Right. <laughs> it's fourth and two Tigers. Minute 23 remaining in the half. Rubley out of the shotgun. Here's the snap with two receivers left. He goes over the middle. The pass is incomplete. Drop. It was dropped by the intended receiver that time, and that was Jaden Williams went up out of the slot left. He drops the ball incomplete, and Dowling will take over. And I believe that was Blake Anderson on the play who broke it up. Great job by the Dowling defense stepping up. And now let's see what Dowling's going to do with 119 mark. A ball on the 32. Will yeah. they go to their hurry-up offense? They ran their two-minute offense last night, and it looked pretty good to me. All right, we'll see as the Maroons now with uh, Steingraber in at quarterback. Where's number 10? Jake the senior gives to uh, Swagger, and he goes right up the gut across the 35 and pushes his way up to about the 36-yard line for a gain of four to bring up second down and four. Game clock continues to run under a minute 10 here in the first half. That was the inside power play. Dominic Varelli from his left guard position does a little full block inside, tries to pick off the linebacker. And Schwager follows that block. They're going to give him five yards up to the 37 after the umpire. Second and five for the Maroons. Steingraber at quarterback. Jake, here's a snap. And the give left side and ha having some room and finally getting tripped up and down at the 49-yard line. And let's see, that was not Schwager. That, that was the counter, Mark, where, where the fullback will kick out and they pull the backside guard. Johnny, give me a help, help in hand here. It was uh, Kate Gokenauer. Gokenauer, the fullback with a rare carry. So Gokenauer carries the ball up to the 48-yard line. He picked up 11 yards on the play, and it's first and 10 Maroons. And now back to throw is Steingraber. Lost it up downfield, and the pass is underthrown incomplete to Louis Brooks as Steingraber <laughs> underthrew Louis. And if the Valley defensive back would have turned around, he might have had something there, but it goes incomplete. Well, that Valley defensive back has some speed, too, and he was staying up with Louis Brooks. Dubrava. Uh, Dubrava, yeah. That, that Dubrava is one heck of an athlete. So that stops the clock, and that's the thing. You go for the big play, but you stop the clock with 17 seconds. Second and 10, Dowling from the 48. Handoff Swagger, and he's hit and dropped the line of scrimmage. Hello and good night. Stuffed at the line of scrimmage to bring up third and ten maroons from their own 48. Well, he was stuffed because uh, Jake Olson had a tough time in the middle and got knocked back into Schwager, knocked him off his feet. Mark, it's halftime. Yeah, hard to believe that. 22 nothing. Dowling leading at halftime over the Valley Tigers. And uh, we're going to catch up with John Chido and, and head coach uh, Tom Wilson of Dowling Catholic at the Maroons' perspective as uh, John is uh, caught up with the head coach of Dowling. And Johnny, take it away with Tom Wilson.
Well, Coach Wilson, great start to a first half. Seems like the offense was uh, moving the ball quite well down the field. The defense has been really stout up front, and your linebackers have put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Oh, we had a good half, but uh, you guys know in this rivalry, it's going to take four quarters, and you know we leave a couple points off the board with extra points, which is concerning. But we've done some some really good things. We're, we'll just see if we're mature enough to finish it. Okay, thank you, Coach. Good luck in the second half. John Chida with uh, head coach Tom Wilson of Dowling Catholic. The Maroons leading 22 to nothing here at halftime. And Dave, you go back to pregame and what we talked about, what had to happen, what could happen, what we found out happened. The Dowling defense came to play tonight. Big plays. We mentioned numerous kids on that side of the ball. A couple of interceptions against the Division One quarterback and Rubley. But it's been the defense that has really propelled the offense for Dowling tonight. And they have been hitting on all cylinders. They've kind of opened it up. Something that you saw this week in practice. Well, absolutely. And I was just thinking while you were talking, was it the front line, the linebackers, or the cornerback that's really excelled? But I can't pick one out, Mark, because all three areas of the game on the defense uh, just really did an outstanding job. They just really flew to the football, got to their gaps, and uh, I didn't see any mistakes and assignments by that defense at all. Well, they played a tremendous uh, first half. Let's take a look at our uh, statistics here at halftime. We want to thank Coach Seifert for providing that uh, to us as uh, Dowling leading at halftime 22 to nothing over the Valley Tigers. Maroons with uh, 10 first downs in the uh, first half, four for Valley. Uh, Jake Steingraber, six out of eight passing, 124 yards and a touchdown at halftime to lead Dowling. Jackson Smolik, uh, five out of nine passing for the Maroons for 34 yards. For Valley, Jake Rubley, eight out of 16 passing, 61 yards, no touchdowns, and two interceptions. Uh, leading rusher for Dowling is Zach Swagger, eight carries, 24 yards, and a touchdown. Cam Middleton, one carry for seven yards. For Valley, their leading uh, ball carrier has been Jaden Williams, nine carries, nine yards in the first half. Matt Mahoney, one carry for one yard. Leading receiver for Dowling is uh, Mac Anderson. Four catches, 105 yards, and a touchdown to lead the Maroons. Koa Thompson, three catches for 24 yards. And Jalen Thompson for the Maroons, two catches for uh, 17 yards. And Louie Brooks, two catches for 12 yards. Louie had a 54-yard punt return for a touchdown to his credit. For Valley, Kale Nesheim. Kale with three catches, 21 yards for the Valley Tigers. Mahoney, three catches for 19. And Drew Henderson, one catch for 16 yards. That's a look at the uh, statistics here at halftime. Again, for the Maroons, they have 189 yards of total offense, 158 in the air, 31 on the ground. For the Valley Tigers, 55 yards of total offense, 61 yards passing, negative six yards on the ground. Dave Marcoulet, those are numbers. Yes, absolutely. And again, that defense and the offense, uh, I thought the offense came out with a wonderful game plan tonight, starting short passes, picking Valley, trying to get them off balance. Uh, and it worked successfully with a mix of a few runs. But most of the time, the passing game is, is what made it for the Maroons, Mark. And uh, we want to thank Kemen, Mercy One, and Skeffington's for uh, – Supporting our broadcast all season long here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Well, we're going to take a break here at halftime. As uh, along with Dave Marcouli and John Chido, I'm Mark Amadale. Halftime score, Dowling 22, the Valley Tigers nothing. We come back, we'll catch up with the president of the Catholic Football League here in Des Moines, and that is Andy Jepson. Uh, when we return from our halftime sponsors, we want to say, say hello to them and thank them. And you've been listening to Dowling Valley Series here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Focus. To define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. In Iowa, we grow corn, but to us, corn is more than a cash crop. It's part of who we are. Corn supports our livestock, helping our animals thrive. Corn fuels us. Ethanol powers our state as we push towards a clean, burning future. Corn nourishes us. It gives us an abundance of good food that nourishes our families, helps our student athletes grow stronger. In Iowa, we grow corn. But the truth is, corn grows Iowa.
Valley Stadium here on a beautiful night for week two of the high school football season. Dowling leading Valley 22 to nothing here at halftime. And I have the pleasure to be joined by Andy Jepson, the president of the Catholic Football League. And coach, thanks for coming up here. Guy who wears lots of hats. Mark Coulier told me you were coaching girls softball. Is that right, <laughs> Jeff? I've, I've, I've had the, the pleasure of coaching his granddaughter for the oh last my three or four gosh. years. Now, is he a good parent when he's out, or grandparent when he's out there? He's I the mean, best. He's the best. Oh, he, uh, that's all I need to hear. He, he loves my, my uh, first base coaching antics. So <laughs> he's, he's probably the only one that loves it. But, uh. Well, Andy, appreciate you coming by. I know Catholic Football League is off and running. Uh, a lot going on. Uh, I know our, our sideline guy, Johnny Chido, was one of the uh, coaches in the Catholic Football League at one time, now the eighth grade coach at Dowling. We'll get to Johnny here in a minute. But talk about where we're at. Catholic yeah. Football League still going on in the weekends? Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, you know, obviously with the environment that we're in right now, we, we weren't exactly sure what the Catholic Football League or the Youth Football League season was going to look like. But, um, you know, we've got a great partnership with the guys over at Mid Iowa Youth Football League for our sixth and seventh graders. and. Um, they really put a great plan together for all of the local youth leagues um, to get started a little bit earlier than normal right. so that we can kind of space the season out in case we've got, you know, the need to reschedule something in the middle of the year. And um, So our 6th and 7th graders actually opened uh, their season last weekend, and, and they're off and running. Uh, our, our flag kids, 1st through 5th, will start their season uh, next weekend coming out of Labor Day, and, and uh, we're excited about all of it. It'll be a little... A little different, some different precautions and some different plans, but uh, our numbers are really, really strong, and, and we're just super excited to, uh, you know, provide an opportunity for the kids this year. And that's what's amazing. You know, we're going through the COVID epidemic. You know, parents, we always had the, uh, you know, the heads up campaign, sure. the concussion. That seemed to be prevalent here the last five years. Yep. Now we have the COVID on top of that, and, oh, do kids want their – or the parents want their kids playing football, yeah. well, the numbers are up. And yeah. that says a lot about the community there. Yeah, I think that's 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 a great point. Well, and it, it, it's a number of things, right? I mean, <laughs> these kids have been cooped up uh, that's true. for, for, yeah. for a number of months. And um, we've taken as many precautions as we can with, with masking and spreading practices out and, uh, and, and, again, trying to set our schedule up in a manner where, where we can be as safe as possible with distancing and things like that. And so, you know, as always, we're just – uh, super appreciative of, of all of the support and, and the parents and families that have, uh, you know, some are new to the Catholic Football League, but we have so many that are longtime supporters and have had multiple kids go through our program. And, um, you know, we, we just feel very fortunate to be at the point that we're at and preparing to, uh, to, to play our season and, and, and hopefully, um, you know, one day at a time, one week at a time. That's right. kind of the approach right now, but so far so good. Well, and, I, and hats off to the coaches in the league, and I know Johnny's one of them. And, and John, you can tell, it. Uh, you know, just going to practice, how much the environment has changed. You coaches have to take care of the sanitization along with teaching out all the other good football skills. Uh, that's a big thing at each and every practice before, let alone games. Yeah, it sure is. And when you're dealing with uh, young kids like that and trying to get them to uh, – acclimate to to the environment and make you know we try to stress that now your mask is part of your equipment That's right. it's just like your helmet you have to bring it with you all the time you have to have it on all the time yeah. and we only can control the things we can control and and that's one of them and as long as we can control that then there's hope we can play uh that week so we, we take it uh, week by week and uh it's been good so far yeah, yeah. certainly has and a andy uh, you know i know that you got to stress that to all the coaches because you may coach a team but you're responsible for all the coaches and getting them on the same page making kids better so when they get into the dowling well that is the dowling program but yeah. they get to dowling kids are growing up right in before our eyes yeah you know the, the, the my my experience with the catholic football league um i've, I've just always been felt so fortunate um to have the connection to Dowling Catholic football that we have, you know, it does. It certainly doesn't. It doesn't hurt our case when when you're affiliated with a, a program that's won seven state titles in a row. And our kids, you know, not tonight, unfortunately, but most night most nights in, in in a normal environment, you know, we've got hundreds and hundreds of kids out here watching their idols play on Friday night, just waiting for their turn. And that's kind of our role is is to. Um, create a positive experience for them when they're little and, and, and try to foster that love of the game, keep them active in the game until we can hand them off to our, our eighth grade staff who, you know, they, they kind of tend to see their role the same way where they're fostering, you know, an, an even more urgent, um, you know, kind of acclimation to what we do at Dowling Catholic. And, um, you know, we're, we're all just very, very uh, blessed to be able to work together as, as well as we do. And Coach Wilson and his staff get a lot of credit for that. 
Well, and he's a big part of your input. You know, you, you, you're the president and you have all your officers with you, but Tom Wilson is a big part of the lower levels, the middle school, and then, of course, getting into high school. He's a big part of this. It, it's it's, it's um, nothing short of amazing, to be honest with you. As many hats as Coach Wilson wears at the high school, whether it be obviously as the head coach of the football team, but, but also as the athletic director and, and – uh, um, he's never short on time, you know, for those of us that, that have questions for him or um, need resources from him. And, and like I said, we're, we're as, as a youth league, we couldn't be more fortunate to, to be paired with the high school program that we are just because Coach Wilson knows how critically important the feeder program is, and he um, takes great pride in it. Jepson, the president of the Catholic Football League, and Andy, if folks want to uh, know how to get involved, mm -hmm. uh, talk about the website, the contact people. I know uh, emails and that are on the website, but uh, if somebody is interested, non-Catholic, Catholics yeah. alike, uh, kids just coming through, maybe you have a first, second, third grader that you're thinking, well, he didn't play this year, but I may want to get him in next year. Yep. How do they get in touch with you and your program? Yeah, absolutely. All of our information is on our website, which is www.org. Um, generally speaking we open registration about april 1st this year was delayed because of some of the uncertainty about where we were going so we didn't open until uh, early may uh, but in in normal times we'll open the registration april 1st uh, all of the registration is online all of our contact information is online and, and, and my my personal contact information is online so uh, for anybody that uh, is interested in, in in the program that we run and how we set things up or how to get involved next year i would encourage them to just uh, feel free to drop me a text message or an email or you know whatever works best for them and talk about the the board of directors the, the guys and get the guys you work the with guys you know, do all the work well the guys and the gals behind the scenes yeah. who don't get enough credit the wives yeah, absolutely. Uh, the volunteers talk about yeah. uh, your board we're, we're, we're incredibly incredibly blessed we, we've got um you know a range of guys who have young kids that are just starting in the program and coming up through the program all the way to to a bunch of veterans like johnny and and, and uh, skig and a bunch of different guys that have had you know kids go through the program and have been around dowling catholic football for you know far longer than i have certainly uh and, and those guys are the are the the life bread of our of our you know program they take on a tremendous responsibility whether it be marketing our program or whether it be organizing uh, you know, practices and organizing the league and getting schedules put together. And, um, you know, it, if nothing else, it's just a really, really fun group of guys to be around. They, they have a passion for Dowling Catholic football. They have a passion for the game of football and, and for the, the kids that are involved in our program. And, um, you know, that makes the time and the effort that we put into it uh, all the more worthwhile because we enjoy it. I think we enjoy being around each other and, and working together. Now, one of those guys is on the sideline besides John Chido. Hey, Johnny, I know you're talking to your fans over there, but uh, there's some guy named Skig that uh, Coach Jepson called out, uh, Mark Skigliano, who helped us out last week with the, uh, the tent down at Simpson. But how's the chain gang, chain gang doing down there, Johnny? Uh, you know, Mark has many hats as well. <laughs> I mean, he's involved with the Catholic Football League, chain gang, he films games on the freshman level, but I want to say this about Coach Jepson. I mean, we are so fortunate to have him as our leader, uh, how organized he is, how great he is to be around, and he's a he's a coach at Grandview College. I, I mean, that, that, that is uh, uh, exceptional to have someone like that with his experience, not only playing, but coaching, and his organizational skills to be a part of this league. It's just been, it's, it's awesome to be a part of. He gives a lot of his time and talent, and... Uh, you know, his dad just got put in the Hall of Fame, Johnny, up there at Manson Northwest Webster High School. My uh, my aunt taught swimming up there at Manson, Doris Trutzenberg, yep. and she's still retired and, and living up there. I think she taught Jepson how to swim, uh, Johnny, I believe. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah. that, 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 was, that was a chore for her, I'm, <laughs> I'm quite sure. <laughs> you imagine some guy, 6'7", six, 6'8", six, six, in high I, school, I, you know, I teaching to, how to I tend swim. to sink. Yeah, don't float, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, but hats off to all of you, you know, and, and all you guys. And what a great job. Numbers are up, and yep. I just looked at this. You know, I looked at some old notes, uh, uh, Andy, and, you know, you're talking about the concussion syndrome and getting mm -hmm. through that. Now we got COVID yep. on top of all this. Yeah. I just think anybody that's volunteering their time uh, and helping out uh, has yeah. a lot to go through, and they're doing, a, doing it for the love of the game and yeah. the betterment of the program. Yeah, 50-plus 50, 50 volunteer coaches, uh, first, grade, first grade through seventh grade, and, and some of the – some of the most genuine best people uh, that you'd ever want to be around that just have a, a really have a passion for creating a great experience for our kids and, and, and building that love of the game. And, you know, we talk all the time about the fact that, 
Um, you know, the results on the scoreboard for these kids really don't matter. The only statistic that matters is if you've got 12 kids on your team this year, we want to see 12 plus two more maybe next That's year. That's right. Uh, you know, with, with kids that they shared their experience with. And um, we're just fortunate to have such a great network of guys. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, Coach Chido, the, the, the check is in the mail for the, for the, uh, for the nice commentary there. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure no, that gets to you. You deserve it. <laughs> well deserved. All right, Johnny, thank you for uh, all you do on the sidelines there. And, of course, uh, they have their season open, the eighth graders season yeah. open Tuesday. Yeah, can't wait to watch them get going. And, and, of course, if folks want to get involved, dmcatholicfootball.com is a website. Uh, Guardians for all helmets. We talked yep. about the safety process. That's tremendous. That was something you guys were striving for for the last couple of years, and now everybody has a guardian yep. on their helmet. Yep. Yeah, we're, 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 we're trying to stay ahead of the curve. You know, uh, equipment is uh, the, the technology with the equipment is, is ever advancing, and, and, and that's a chore to, to keep up with it. But, um, you know, every precaution that we can take from an equipment standpoint, uh, along with all the different techniques, you mentioned uh, USA Football's Heads Up program. That's, that's, a, that's a staple of what we teach uh, in our program. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a great community of folks that are forward looking and, and trying to find ways to make the, the, the great game of football as, as safe as it possibly can be and, uh, and to sustain into the future. So um, we, we just love being a part of it. Andy, thank you for joining us. Always stick around. You're always welcome. Talk whatever's going on with uh, uh, Catholic Football League. You and your staff do a great job. I, I'm blessed to be I'm blessed to have you guys part of our program tonight and obviously the big game, the game That's right. the whole state's watching. Couldn't, couldn't have gone much better in the first half. To, in uh, Iowa. Dowling fans there. agree, the Valley to fans us. who have texted yeah. me, a few of them out there. <laughs> coach Sechrist, uh, yeah. the Valley uh, basketball, girls basketball coach, yeah, going a little bit different. But yeah. Andy, thanks for all you do for Catholic Football. You bet. Thanks for having me. Always appreciate it. All right, Andy Jepson, my guest. We'll take a break and come back. You're listening and watching Iowa Catholic Radio and Central Iowa Sports Network coverage of Dowling and Valley. Halftime score, Dowling 22, Valley nothing here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. In Iowa, we grow corn, but to us, corn is more than a cash crop. It's part of who we are. Corn supports our livestock, helping our animals thrive. Corn fuels us. Ethanol powers our state as we push towards a clean, burning future. Corn nourishes us. It gives us an abundance of good food that nourishes our families, helps our student athletes grow stronger. In Iowa, we grow corn. But the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Trax or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WalkieChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WalkieChevy.com. Here at Valley Stadium, here is the kickoff by the uh, Valley Tigers as kicking it into the end zone for a touchback, and that is Lennox Krell. And it'll be first and 10, Dowling on their own 20-yard line. The Maroons lead it 22 to nothing. And uh, Dowling got touchdowns from uh, Mac Anderson of seven yards from quarterback Z uh, Jake Steingraber, seven nothing Dowling in the first quarter. And then Swagger on a one-yard run, the extra point no good, gave Dowling a 13 nothing lead at the end of one quarter of play. Jake Calvert for the Maroons, a 30-yard field goal in the second quarter, improved the lead to 16 to nothing. And then Louis Brooks on a 54-yard punt return, uh, extra point good by Calvert, 22 nothing Dowling here as we start the third quarter. Maroons on a... Handoff right up the gut. Swagger is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. And it'll bring up second down and maybe 11. He'll lose a yard back to the 19 there, Dave. And the Valley defense coming to play here in the second half. The Valley really got some good penetration there and forced Swagger into the pile. He was unable to cut it outside uh, one hole where the, uh, the opening was. So second and 19 Maroons as uh, Dowling has... The quarterback is Steingraber. Back to throw now. Rolls to his right. Pumps once. Fires the ball downfield. Incomplete. Underthrew is 
his intended receiver that time for the Maroons. Incomplete and well pressured that time by the uh, Valley defense. Carson Brown, the intended receiver for the Maroons. Yeah, very good coverage by uh, uh, Trey Krause, I believe it was, for, for Valley. And uh, Stein, uh, Steingraber, excuse me, threw the ball away on that mark. That was a smart play by him. Certainly was, and that brings up third and 11 Maroons. Dowling leading 22 to nothing over the Valley Tigers. This is the first series of the second half. Back to throw Jake Steingraber. Lost the ball downfield looking for Brooks. The pass is caught. Did he stay in bounds? Yes, he did. First oh, oh, down, Dowling. 41 oh, oh. yard line, and Louis Brooks out jumped. Max Mason Dubrava on the play. Mark, that play was coming right at us on the Valley sideline, and I thought, oh, boy, we're going to have to kick the ball. And all of a sudden, Louis Brooks came down with that ball. What a beautiful throw by Jack Steingraber. Got the ball up in the air and floated it right into Louis Brooks. Nice job. First down. 20-yard gain for the Maroons, and it's uh, first and 10 Dowling from the 41. From their own 41-yard line, the uh, tight end for the Maroons is Jalen Thompson on the right side. As the Maroons now look back to the line of scrimmage, Jake Steinbreaker, the quarterback. Steingraber has Cam Middleton in at tailback, the, the uh, number 32, the junior running back, and now penalty flags down. And this I think thing delay is, a game, Mark. Yep, the game clock wound down, and uh, it'll be a delay against the Maroons. That'll back them up five yards. So it'll bring up second or first and uh, 15 for Dowling. We want to thank uh, Kemen. Mercy One and Skeffington's Formal Wear for supporting our broadcast here in Iowa Catholic Radio. And of course, as you watch the game, as we simulcast with the Central Iowa Sports Network, you can see their ads in the uh, corner of your screen. Now the Maroons with a first and 15, two receivers right, three to the left, tight end standing up in the slot left, Stein Graber at quarterback, Jake looks to his right, fires it out, passes caught, quick hitter, Mac Anderson with the catch up to the 41-yard line. That was... Uh Carson Brown, I believe, making the catch mark, but ran a beautiful right about a five-yard stop. Patterson Mack was on the outside and uh, trying to get deep on that. So they'll give the forward progress up to the 41. That was the original line of scrimmage, so they got the yardage of uh, the penalty uh, back, Dave. Mack one-on-one -on -one coverage down here at the bottom on the Valley bench. Brooks up at the top, one-on-one. -on -one. No safety help. And now Dowling left side of the offensive Shoot. line jumped. That, that was a nice situation for the Dowling Maroons to have offensively. So two penalties. And it's a five-yarder. goes The ball will be moved back to the 36-yard line. 10.35 remaining here in the third quarter. Dowling 22, Valley nothing. Maroons are back on their own 37-yard line after they uh, mark it off. So it'll be second down, 14 for the Maroons after the penalty. Steingraber with three receivers right. Tight end is on the right side. And I'm sorry, three receivers to the left for the Maroons at the top of your screen. Six seconds left in the play clock. The Maroons trying to use a lot of time. Valley in a four-front defense. Back to throw Steingraber. Now in the pocket. Gets out of the pocket. Hit. And bounces around across the 40 up to the 41-yard line. So he got the penalty yards back. It'll bring up third and ten for the Maroons. All receivers were running short routes that time, and Steingraber uh, didn't find anyone that he was confident to throw it to. They were well covered, so he did the correct thing, tucked it, and picked up whatever he could. Six yards is what he got. He that's, another, that's, we'll take that. I thought he just had about uh, three or four. They gave him six. So third and eight Maroons from their own 43. Dowling going left to right towards the north or to the south end zone. Steingraber back to throw the ball. Is hit and batted down at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete. And uh, that is another uh, uh, knockdown for the Valley defense. And I believe it was uh, Braden Edwards who uh, knocked it down, I believe. Incomplete. And it'll bring up fourth down. That was Jalen Thompson, the tight end, coming over the middle. He was well covered. I'm not sure the coaches are going to be happy with the, the read that uh, Steingraber had on that one. So that'll bring up fourth down for Dowling. And uh, Jake Calvert in to punt. Koa Thompson will uh, be the long snapper here. As Dowling back to its own 30. And that's Calvert. The left foot kick gets it away. End over end kick. And a running catch coming up on it at the 30-yard line. And crashing forward, making a nice catch is Dubrava. That's Dubrava. dangerous. That is dangerous. And he hits the ground. And they're going to stop his uh, forward progress right about the... 
First and 10 Valley from around the 35-yard line with 9.25 remaining here in the third quarter. Dowling leading 22 to nothing over the Valley Tigers. First and 10 Valley from their own 33. Let's go down to John Chido on the Dowling sideline for the first time in the second half. Johnny? Well, if you're Dowling, the, the, the one thing you don't want, Mark, is, is to get complacent. And, and they had that big third down conversion to, to Louis Brooks and then the, a penalty and a couple misreads there. And uh, uh, now the, they end up forcing them to, to kick the football. Now Valley's in a good spot to, to try to get something going here. Valley now on first down, and they're going to keep the football and sliding for uh, yardage is the quarterback that time. You haven't seen that all night, and that's Rubley keeping the football after faking the handoff. Yeah, that was an inside read. He read the line, uh, the outside linebacker who was crashing down. He Rubley kept it and got a few yards outside. So Rubley up to the 35, gain of two, second and eight. Rubley over the middle, and a nice sliding catch at midfield, first down, and that is the uh, wide receiver Mahoney with the catch. Matthew Mahoney with the first down catch at the midfield. Top notch Division I Mahoney wide open in the middle. Valley in the hurry up offense. 15 yard gain. Back to throw is uh, Rubley. Fires a ball out and the pass is a caught coming back for it. And that is Reardon with the catch. The big guy comes back and they're going to give him forward progress. And let's see, they're going to spot it incomplete. Excuse me. They yeah, say he dropped I, I it. I tell you, Ru <laughs> Rubley was lucky that wasn't intercepted because he threw into a lot of coverage there. So it's second and ten from the midfield. Ball is loose and Dowling's got it. The Maroons get on top of the football. Defensive lineman for the Maroons coming up with it as Dowling recovers a fumble that time as the Tigers go to the ground. Uh, Pettis I, with the recovery. Jalen Pettis. Great. Ball at the valley. Boy, so that, that's a big play, Mark. Big defensive play. And that is huge. John Chido, that defense has come up big all night. They were bending a little bit, giving up some yardage to the Valley Tigers. They went hurry up, but Pettis with the fumble recovery, John. Yeah, he was in the right place at the right time, Mark. It was a bad mesh point between the quarterback and the running back. And uh, Jalen Pettis ran right into it, Mark, and was able to secure the football. First down, Dowling at the uh, – 48 of Valley, and they'll give it up, a uh, handoff to Swagger, and Zach gets uh, near the 45. They're going to give him three to bring up second and seven to Smolik in at quarterback. Dowling continues to rotate their senior quarterback with their sophomore quarterback. Right now it is Jackson Smolik, the sophomore in there, uh, Dave Marcoulier. And that looked like their inside zone play that time, Mark, able to pick up a couple yards. But both these quarterbacks, watching them in practice, uh, I would not want to pick the starter either because they are both quality quarterbacks. All right, second and seven, Dowling. Pettis out of the shotgun to give to Swagger any kind of zigs and zags. He gets a couple yards, carries the football inside the 45, down to the Tiger 43, a pick up a two, and will bring up third and five for the Maroons at the Valley 43-yard line. Yeah, you called it, Mark. He was zigging and zagging instead of going. He, he just couldn't make up his mind on which way to run on that one. And, and whenever you do that, uh, you're allowed more penetration by the Valley defense. All right, we have a timeout on the field. This will be our uh, COVID timeout for uh, sanitary reasons. We'll take a one-minute break and return. 7.38 remaining third quarter, and it's Dowling, 22, Valley nothing. From Valley Stadium in West Des Moines here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. We might not always know what the day will bring, but some things are certain. The sun will rise and your lights will go on. That's because at MidAmerican Energy, we're obsessively, relentlessly committed to providing you energy when and where you need it, to connecting with you and keeping our communities safe and strong. Because the most important thing we put our energy into is you. We're obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Central Bank is proud to support the unmatched spirit of sportsmanship and hard work exemplified by our local athletes. We're fans of high school sports and the way the big game and hometown team rally a community. Best of luck to all of today's competitors. Play hard, have fun, and make something great happen. Central Bank, member FDIC. Godfather's Pizza's Autumn Feast. A medium specialty pizza, a medium pepperoni pizza, and my new caramel apple spruce with Twix candy pieces. Get yours today. Stadium, West Des Moines. Uh, 7.38 remaining here in the third quarter. Dowling 22, the Valley Tigers nothing. Beautiful night. Temperature in the 
Lower 80s to start with. It'll cool off here into the upper 70s by the time uh, we finish. Dowling leading 22 to nothing. That was our halftime score. The Maroons threatening here. Third and five at the Valley 43. Smolik back to throw. Lost it downfield. Looking for Louis Brooks, and the pass is incomplete. Louis dove for it at the last minute at the 10-yard line. And incomplete. Boy, does he have speed. And Smolik and Steingraber are both throwing balls that he and uh, uh, Anderson and company can run under. Yeah, he really does. And that DeBrava is locking up man for man with him this whole game. And uh, uh, those two guys are really having a top quality <laughs> battle. And now DeBrava, I believe that is him deep returning the punt here. Uh, Calvert in to punt for Dowling. He'll stand back at his own inside his 45. Fourth and five. For Dowling from the Valley 43. DeBrava back, as you mentioned, Dave, at the 10-yard line of the Valley Tires. Good snap. Calvert pooches it towards the Dowling sideline, and it goes out of bounds inside the 25. So no return. That's the good news. And Valley will have it first and 10 from right around their own 25-yard line as the officials uh, line it up. And let's go down to the Dowling sideline. That is where John Chido has been all night. And, Johnny, take it away. I just want to give you an injury update, Mark and uh, Coach. Uh, Jake Olson went out on that uh, third down play. Uh, he was the one injured with that injury timeout, and Caleb Saylor was the new center for the Dowling Maroons. Yeah, uh, Saylor, we, uh, it's listed as one of the backups. Uh, it's backup guard, Caleb, a 5 Eight, 215 pound junior wears number 50 in its center. Thank you, John, for that uh, update. And that's always a big loss when you lo lose your center. Yeah, a lot of things happen there. First down Valley from the 25, and now here is Rubley back to throw, and now he has to avoid pressure. He may have lost the football, but came down on top of it inside the 20. They're going to lose six yards on the play back to the 19-yard line, it looks like, Dave. Well, wow. Pearson put a lot of pressure on him, and the entire rest of the interior of the defense was in on the sack. A lot of pressure on Rubley. So Rubley, inside handoff to uh, Williams. Jalen hit and dropped. He crosses the 25 up to the 26-yard line. So a seven-yard game, so he got some of those sack yards back, but it'll bring up third and long for the Valley Tigers. Well, that was probably Williams' best run inside of the evening. He has really been neutralized by the Dowling defense tonight. He has not done a whole lot of damage, and now it'll bring up third and nine for Valley from their own 26-yard line. Williams gaining seven at last carry. Two receivers right, one to the left. Back to throw is Rubley over the middle. He fires it. Pass is caught. First down, 40-yard line. Valley Tigers, a nice reception that time. Reardon. Into a little bit of traffic is uh, Reardon, the big tight end, Eli Reardon. 6'6", 220 pound, just a junior, was one of the few starters back from last year he, for Valley. He is a big one. His brother went to uh, graduated years ago, played for Nebraska. Inside handoff to Williams, kind of zigs and zags, goes a little east-west, finally cuts it up and gets across the 40, up to the 41-yard line. But he did a lot of east-west running that time, Dave, before he put his head down and got a yard. Yes, he did, and that means a good job by the defensive front because he could not find anything open. One-yard gain that time. Reardon's catch was for 14 yards, and now Williams a yard gain. Second and nine, Valley. As Rubley back to throw, fires out. Off the hands, the intended receiver was uh, Reardon on the far side. A little quick out pattern, but he Rubley overthrew him and couldn't hook up. Out of bounds to the Dowling sideline on the far side. Well, I think we know what was said in the Valley locker room at halftime, Mark, and that's let's throw the ball to Reardon. <laughs> because I believe they threw to him once, one time, in the, one first time in the first half, and they're just looking for him every single play. That's I would, too, if I had a 6'6", 265 tight end. All right, Ruby back to throw, has time, fires the ball downfield. The pass is tipped, and they're going to call it incomplete, I believe, as Rubley was hit and dropped. You know what, Mark, that ball it. went to Mahoney. And it'll bring up fourth down, but it went through and, and uh, Reardon. And I thought DeBrava then caught it. It went through, I think, Reardon, and then it tipped by a Dowling player, and then <laughs> DeBrava John was John right may there. have seen it. That, yeah. that ball touched a couple players. <laughs> that was a deflected ball, John Chido. It, it was tipped three different times, uh, Mark. It went through, <laughs> I think Mac, or, uh, Jake Anderson was the last one to get his hands on the ball. All right, Valley forced a punt, and here's the punt. It's a short end-over-end -end kick, far sideline of Louis Brooks. At his own 25, returns it to the far sideline out of bounds 
as he crossed the 30 up to the 33-yard line. You know, another prediction, I don't think we're ever going to see these guys fair catch the ball. <laughs> Brooks, Brooks back there, and who's the other one who, who's been returning them? They, they do not like fair Dubrava. catches. Too bravo. They don't like well for, for for Dallas. They Dallin. got two we're back. <laughs> they don't like fair catches. <laughs> that that one was a pretty short punt. Yes, it was. <laughs> now I, I have to get Morris on here. I know he's coming up from uh, Alabama. He and Willie Farrell listening on the on yeah. The app. I mean, and, imagine uh, those two in a car. I, I <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> you got to. How are you going to get a breath? Smolik in a quarterback. Handoff goes to Middleton. Cam hit and dropped. Line of scrimmage was the uh, thirty-two yard line, and he won't get back to it. Nice job by the Valley defense as they swarm me. But I was going to ask uh, Brian, uh, when, when Coach Mark Coulier was coaching you, did he ever – did he employ – we always had a fair catch. We didn't run it back. Is that true? <laughs> Is that true? No fair no fair catch? Oh, I, didn't fair like, catch. I didn't like him. <laughs> <laughs> the truth will be told, Coach Mark Well, Coulier. only if Brian was deep. Then well, everything's a fair catch. Uh, we'll and then you just pray. We'll see if he's listening. Loss of one, second and 11, Dowling from their own 31. Dowling 22, Valley nothing. 4.50 remaining third quarter, and we got a timeout called by the Maroons. We'll take a one-minute break. 4.49 remaining third quarter. Dowling 22 and Valley nothing on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Hi, I'm Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and this has been a crazy year. We might just run out of furniture, but we still have a great selection right now. We have wicker, we have fire pits, we have poly, and if you want something for your deck this year, you should come see us right now. Still have the greatest selection in Iowa at the best prices. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas, just west of Homemade. Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Trax or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WaukeeChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Here at uh, Valley Stadium, second and 11 for Dowling. They go to the short side of the field, a quick handoff, and hit and drop. Valley had that well read, Dave, as the Maroons go to the short side of the field and bring up third and long for the Maroons. They may have lost another yard or two on the play. Yeah, Valley really, or Dowling needs to, to, to get this game going back. Uh, back to, you know, the first series with these short passes and things. they got to try and open it up a little bit, spread things out. Big third and 10 uh, yard play here. All right, here's a snap. Smolik back to throw, launched it downfield for Brooks. He turned inside, and the pass went outside. Incomplete will bring up fourth down and 11 for Dowling on their own 31-yard line. Stops the clock with 4-12 remaining here in the third quarter. Dowling leading 22 to nothing. Uh, some scores report, uh, number two Ankeny leading number 10 Waukee 10 to 7. Uh, Southeast Polk leading uh, 24 nothing over Ankeny Centennial. Some scores report from the CIML Class 4A. Here it's Dowling 22 to nothing. That was our halftime score. Calvert into punt. You know what? He didn't punt in the first half, but he's punted three times here in the third quarter. Yeah. For Dowling. Low snap. Jake picks it up, gets it away. High, short kick. Fair catch signal for by DeBrava. Catches it in traffic right at the 46-yard line of Valley, and that's where the Tiger offense will take it. First and 10 with 4.03 remaining here in the third quarter. Dowling leading by 22 to nothing, and let's go down to the Dowling sideline. John Chido, come on in. I think you guys mentioned this already. It's this very different second half than the first half. Even the, the pace of play on on the offensive side of the ball. It seems like both teams are having a hard time getting things going. And Coach Marcoulli mentioned about the the short passing game. We haven't seen much of that in the second half. Yeah, the Maroons have uh, gotten the lead, and Dave, they have just tried to execute within their base offense and defense. As uh, we have a stoppage of play, and this will be the. Uh, the sanitation timeout, so we'll take one ourselves as 4.03 remaining, third quarter, Dowling leading 22-0 here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Focus, to define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor, and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, 
greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Here at uh, Valley Stadium, out of the timeout, uh, running play for Valley. They get about a yard. It's big up second down and nine for Valley on their own 47. Trip, three receivers to the left of the formation for Valley. Under center is Rubley. The give is to Jalen Williams. Turns the corner and fights for yardage. And uh, Jaden Williams bowls his way for a first down, Dave. Nice uh, blast there. He got second effort out of him, and he gives Valley the first down at the Dowling, 43. Well, Dowling really put a shot on him, but they forgot to wrap up, and Williams just bounced off. Williams, as we've mentioned, is already signed with Kansas State. He's a top back, and you got to wrap up on him or he's going he's gonna to pick up more on you. First and 10, Tigers from the Dowling 43. I formation backfield, and now quarterback Jake Rook will be under center. Two-step drop, and uh, wants to run, and now he's going to be hit and drop back at the uh, line of scrimmage as he fell forward for no gain. I'll bring up second and 10, Tigers. Good coverage downfield by the Maroons. Mata Brua in the backfield. Is that right? Well, yeah, I point to the number there. If I can't say his <laughs> name, I'll point to the number for you and let you say oh, it. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's one of, hey, Johnny, that's one of your favorite that's names the, out there, Mata. That's one of his favorites. Offset eye formation. Rubley under center from the 43-yard line of Dowling. Handoff goes to Williams. Slips a tackle. Bowls his way across the 35 down to the 34-yard line of Dowling. He'll be shy of the first down by a yard to bring up third and one for the Tigers. Will Herman again holding on. So he could not pick up the first down. Brings up third and short, Mark. Yep, from the Dowling 34-yard line, nine-yard gain for Williams. He's had a 10-yard gain and a nine-yard on this drive. Two minutes remaining, third quarter. Two backs in the backfield, handoff Williams, got the first down, bowls his way down to the 30. Yeah, that's the type of running we were expected to see from Valley in the first half, and all of a sudden it now it's a dose of Williams in the Dowling defense. Right, their offensive line is starting to fire off the ball. They're, they're trying to get Dowling's defense tired. Adam Townsend did a nice job of hanging in there on Williams. Adam took a shot, but he was able to continue to make the tackle. But Valley uh, is really starting to come off the ball on the offensive line. Minute 35 remaining, and Rubley, handoff goes to Williams, stops, now kicks it outside, puts his head down, gets down to the 25-yard line for a pickup of five, and will bring up third and five. Jalen Pettis almost got him from the behind but Williams was able to outrun him and pick up, uh, what, five yards, Mark? Yeah, they'll give him a gain of five. And it'll bring up second down and five for the uh, Valley Tigers. Offset eye formation, Rubley under center. Handoff goes to Williams right over to left guard and gets a yard, maybe two, down inside the 25, the 24 for a pickup of one. It'll bring up third. And about four for the Valley Tigers. Michael one and Max Derry in on the play. Nice job by those two young men. Well, this drive started with four minutes left in the uh, third quarter, and we're almost at the end of the third quarter. This is a long, time-consuming drive, and if Valley wants to get back in this game, they're going to need to score a little bit quicker. They're just taking their time. Offset eye formation, third and four Valley. 30 seconds remaining third quarter. Handoff Williams tries to get outside, bounces outside, still on his feet, puts his head down. He'd be brought down, shy of the first down at the 21 for a gain of three. They, there's a difference of the first half and the second half as Williams was able to get outside that time and then cut it back inside. And uh, with his speed, he's very dangerous once he gets out there. Well, that'll probably be the final play of the third quarter. Valley's going to let the clock run out. And we played through a scoreless third quarter. Dowling maintains their lead they had at halftime. It's 22 to nothing. Dowling Catholic leading the Valley Tigers. We'll be back with the fourth quarter in one minute here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network.
obsessively, relentlessly. That's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away. Delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Focus, to define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. Back here for the fourth quarter here at Valley Stadium. Beautiful night, Dowling Valley. Maroons come in defending seven-time Class 4A champs Dave Marcoulier. And uh, these two teams played, what, two games ago? Spread out over nine, over nine months. Right. Over nine months, so. I bet they didn't watch a whole lot of film <laughs> from Indianola and Roosevelt. They probably they, watched the state championship. I, I don't think so either. All right, for Valley, it's fourth and one. Under center is a quarterback, Rubley. Gives it to Williams. He dives forward. He's got the first down inside the 20, down to the maroon 19, a pickup of two. Simple off uh, tackle play to the left side for Valley. Boy, that Williams is a strong running back. He's strong in the lower body, and once he hits the line, he keeps his feet moving, and he was able to pick up. The first down on that play, Mark. This will be the 10th play of the uh, Valley Drive. It's first and 10 Valley from the Dowling 19-yard line. Underway here in the fourth quarter. Maroons lead it 22 to nothing. And now Ruby back to throw. Loses the football. They call it a football. Dowling's and got Dowling it. Dowling got, got, got on top it. of it. <laughs> Ruby <laughs> lost control. Will Herman, Will, I think, on the back. Will Herman, you betcha. And Ruby kind of shaken up, gets up, and he's disappointed himself. And Dowling makes and causes another turnover. Two interceptions tonight of Ruby, and now a fumble loss. So the young man from Colorado has coughed it up three times, and Dowling has taken advantage. First and ten maroons from the 34. John Shido, how'd it look from the sidelines? Well, Mark, that play was going to come right at me. I'm standing in the corner end zone. It was supposed to be a boot play, but Will Herman came off the edge, and it made a nice angle. He didn't get too far underneath and was right there as Ruby turned around. What a great play by what by Will Herman. Yep, so Valley starts at their own 46-yard line. The drive stalls with the fumble by Rubley. First and 10 Maroons at their own 34-yard line. Dowling going to that diamond formation as they have three tailbacks and the quarterback. And a Steingraber back in at quarterback. The give is to the uh, tailback the and Swagger the ball carrier. And just a... Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. The 34 was the line of scrimmage, Dave, and he didn't get much further yeah, than that. I think that's the inside zone. And, again, uh, they aren't getting any penetration or drive off the ball a uh, line of scrimmage, and uh, Valley's be uh, able to get into the backfield from the edge. Maroon defense coming up with uh, three turnovers tonight. Actually, four turnovers, two interceptions and two fumbles. Low snap. Steingraber picks it up, and he's going to be sacked. Sacked back inside the uh, – 30-yard line, they're going to spot forward progress up to the 29, but a loss on the play of six for the Maroons on a bad snap. Yeah, it's it's a bad snap that did it, and Dominic Varelli, uh, I believe, was walking down on that play, and his man went the opposite way and was able to get in and make the sack. So Steingraber, the Dowling quarterback, is sacked for a six-yard loss. And that'll bring up third and 15. The Maroons are going to let the game clock wind down as we're at the 10-and-a-half-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. And a pistol formation for the Maroons. Steingraber at quarterback. And the handoff goes to uh, Zwager. And Zach uh, tries to slide up to the original line of scrimmage. He does up to the 35-yard line. Gain, gain there of six yards. Bring up fourth and nine for the Maroons. Yeah, that was a nice run by uh, Jack on that play. Or Zach on... Uh reading his blocks and waiting and letting them develop and able to pick up uh, some yardage. Well, the Maroons, Brings up a pump formation. The Maroons have not gotten anything done offensively, so the defensive adjustments by Valley have been very good here in the second half. 
But uh, the defensive adjustments and plays by Dowling have been just as well as the Tigers trail by 22 points. Calvert in the punt again. High kick gets under it, and it drives uh, Valley deep inside the 10. They're going to down it inside near the 5-yard line. Beautiful punt by Calvert. No return by Valley. Maroon's down at about the, they're going to call it the 7-yard line, first and 10 Valley. How about that special team's that, play, Mr. Mark? Well, that's right when we needed it. All right, let's go down to this Dowling sideline, and that is where John Chida was at. Johnny, give us an update. You know, you get, you get, that's the only time you can get really excited about a punt, but what a great time to have it. And, <laughs> and he flipped the field position. Valley's looking to have great field position there to capitalize on it, and Calvert with a tremendous punt. All the way down, they're going to count it. They're down it right at the, uh, say it's the eight-yard line. So uh, Calvert, tremendous punt that time, Dave Marcoux. That's how you used to teach it, right, back in special teams days. You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a kicker like that, yeah, that was uh, that was quite the punt. Uh, they're going to rule it a 66-yard punt with no return for Jake Calvert. Strike that one up. Nine and a half minutes to play. First down Valley from their own eight-yard line. They put it on the ground and give it to Williams. And we got a we got a stoppage of play right now. I don't know if we have somebody injured or we've got a penalty on the play. We'll see here. Well, that's what Dowling's got to do. That defensive line, Patton and Pearson, both got in to hold him to nothing at all, Mark. All right, no gain and no penalty. Back to throw is quarterback Jake Rubley for Valley. Looks to the left side, pass is incomplete towards the Dowling sideline. Valley going left to right towards the uh, south end zone here, wearing their visiting white uniforms with uh, orange Vs and their helmets and uh, orange numbers with a black trim. Dowling in their Home maroon jerseys with white numbers, white pants, white helmets with the maroon D on their helmet. Brings up third and ten for Valley from their own eight-yard line. Rubley now with two receivers left, one to the right. Here's the snap. Rubley in the end zone, fires it out. Pass is caught. First down at the 20, slipping a tackle and brought down at the 24-yard line. Nice catch that time by Mahoney, I believe, for the first down. Yeah, Austin Klein had him, and Mahoney was able to slip the tackle and pick up the first down on that play, Mark. 16-yard gain for Mahoney, and uh, he had a few yards after the catch. So it's first and 10, and uh, the give is to Williams, and Jalen trying to turn the corner. Now he's corralled and finally brought down at the 30-yard uh, line. As he turned the corner, stopped, and moved forward for a gain of six. Well, he immediately looks outside, and if he can get that corner, he's going to take off and use his speed. If not, he's going to cut it up inside and pick up whatever he can. Reminder, stay tuned for the post-game show. We'll have the statistics from the game along with the head coach Tom Wilson of Dowling Catholic. And now uh, sliding upfield for a gain of four is the quarterback, Rubley. Had everybody was covered, he decided to keep the football, and he slid up to the – we're going to spot him down at the 33 for a gain of three there, Dave. Yeah, there was a pretty big opening in the middle there. Dowling did a nice job of closing that down quickly. Brings up – Third and about a foot mark, not a whole lot more. And we have an injured Valley player being helped off to the field. They're going to stop the clock to attend to him. Eight minutes remaining here in the third quarter, and it is uh, it's it Rubley. It's Rubley, the quarterback, who's injured. The backup quarterback is Aiden Price. He wears number 13, and he's a sophomore, and he may have to go in for a play. And they're going to call a timeout. So we will, too. 7.58 exactly left on the clock here in the fourth quarter. It's Dowling 22, the Valley Tigers nothing, here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Focus. To define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor, and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. Without question, the COVID-19 pandemic created many disruptive changes in our lives. Some of us got sick, jobs and income were compromised, it was difficult to even spend time with family and friends. But one thing hasn't changed, and that's Westside Auto Pro's commitment to quality service, and that will never change. We're here to make sure you get maximum performance and reliability from your vehicle. So as we all move forward, keep Westside Auto Pros in mind. You've been through enough. 
We'll make sure your car is the least of your worries. Here at uh, Valley Stadium, the Tigers use a timeout there. Uh, Dave Marcoulier at Rubley had to leave the game for a moment. They had to burn a timeout. I don't, he's back in. He just uh, I think he had an equipment issue, so it brings up third and one for Valley from the 33-yard line. Give to Williams. Up the gut they go, and he gets the first down up near the 35-yard line for a pickup of two yards there, Dave. Yeah, actually, Ruby... Rubley was on the sideline that play, Mark. He, he just now went in. I'm not sure why he stayed out once they called timeout. I yeah, believe we, he's legal to play. but Yeah, I thought they had a problem with his equipment, and then they got it all fixed. And now Grevengode comes in for Valley as a tight end. He and Reardon will both play tight end. First and 10 Valley from their own 35-yard line. Rubley back to throw. Has time. Fires it downfield. The pass is caught. And uh, backing up for the catch and making a nice reception, Matthew Mahoney again. Mahoney with another big catch. The Ivy Leaguer shows uh, his uh, good hands right there to the 48. I think what we're seeing in the secondary for Dowling is don't get beat deep. Give them anything they want in front of you, but do not get beat deep. All right, Ruby again, a quick hitter. This time the catch is made on the near sideline by Cale Nesheim, and it's in Dowling territory at the Maroon 47 to pick up a five. And on the coverage was Jake Anderson, who's just a sophomore. So Valley up Temple here, second and five Valley from the 47. Back to throw is Mahoney, fires it near side and out of bounds to Reardon. And he steps out of bounds at the 42-yard line of Dowling, gain of five. Again, Dowling is probably perfectly comfortable giving him these five-yard plays. Bend, but don't break. Yep, 40. Don't get beat deep. Bruins lead it 22 to nothing. We're under seven minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Mark Hamadale, Dave Marcoulier joining you tonight. Beautiful night from Valley Stadium. Clear skies, nice wind. Temperature went down as the sun went down. Pass over the middle by Rubley is caught. First down at the 30-yard line. Nice uh, yards after the catch by Valley's Danny Rankins. Yeah, and they're really uh, doing a nice job on the line of scrimmage, but they don't have to hold them very long, but they're making it tough to get any pressure on Rubley right now because they're going this quick, short passing game. 12-yard gain, first down Valley. Rubley over the middle again. Pass caught by Reardon. He's got the first down. He's finally hit and dropped at the 15-yard line of Dowling. This is the deepest that Valley has been in Dowling territory tonight, a 15-yard game. Boy, he's a big target going across the middle. He runs a lot of under routes, which he did right to left that time. And when you see someone 6'5", 265 going across the middle, you're going to throw it to him. Yes, you are, and he was wide open. Ankeny leading Waukee, 17-14. Back to throw Rubley, avoids pressure. Now he's tripped up the line of scrimmage and falls forward maybe for a yard. And uh, that was like a, a shoestring tackle, if you will. Chase Patton. By Patton. Patton did a great job. And no gain of the play, they'll call it. Back to the 15-yard line, Rubley is brought down. So no gain. Six minutes remaining. Dowling 22, Valley nothing. Second and 10 Tigers at the Dowling 15. Deepest penetration. Low snap. Ruby has to pick it up on the bounce. Rolls to his right, and he throws it away. Incomplete. Close receiver was at the pylon in the end zone. Well, I'm, I, not, I'm not sure what happened with the center, but that ball rolled there. It, well, <laughs> it rolled, and then it, then it popped yeah, up. Yeah, it popped like it up bounced. a little to him, but, man, that shouldn't happen in a shotgun formation. <laughs> it did. Jake Anderson on coverage for the Maroons. That stops the clock with 5.49 remaining in the fourth quarter. Reminder, post-game show, we will have John Chato interviewing head coach Tom Wilson of Dowling Catholic. We'll also go through all the statistics of tonight's game. Uh, we appreciate uh, Coach Seifert, who does a great job with that, uh, providing those statistics. On our post-game show, following a nice game here on CISN.TV and Iowa Catholic Radio. Third and 10, Valley, Rubley, under pressure, avoids tackle, and now he's hit and drop back inside the 20-yard, uh, inside the 15-yard line. They're going to move it back to the 17. He'll lose two, and it'll bring up fourth down. Fourth and 12 for Valley. And the Tigers looking to put points on the board. Yeah, I believe you might as well credit Jalen Pettis there because I think he was the first one in, but there were a number of Maroons on that front line in there shooting the gaps, putting a lot of pressure on uh, Rubley that time. And the Tigers will call a timeout. We will too. 5-18 remaining here in the fourth quarter. It's Dowling 22, the Valley Tigers nothing on Iowa Catholic Radio in the Central Iowa Sports Network. 
Save thousands now at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Trax or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WaukeeChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Hi, I'm Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and this has been a crazy year. We might just run out of furniture, but we still have a great selection right now. We have wicker, we have fire pits, we have poly, and if you want something for your deck this year, you should come see us right now. Still have the greatest selection in Iowa at the best prices. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas, just west of Homemade. We're back here at uh, Valley Stadium. Not the largest crowd in an 8,000 seat uh, stadium, but it's fourth and 13 Valley. Rubley under center. He's hit and sacked. The Maroons come up with a big sack, and that is big number 67, Russell Pearson, with the sack. And Dowling will take over first and 10 from their own 20 on fourth and 13 for Valley. Nobody downfield open, Dave Marcoulier. And Jalen Pettis also. What a beautiful play by the Dowling front when it was time to step up. They did. Nice job of bending and not breaking, and when they had to, they got it done. Beautiful John, job. John Chidles in the Dowling sideline. And, Johnny, when you talk to Coach Wilson tonight in the postgame show, uh, I don't know where to start the defense. They can only play 11. I think we've got six or seven of them that we could talk about tonight. Oh, absolutely. But I want to mention Max Deary. He's bringing pressure up the middle on a blitz. He's making the quarterback leave the pocket, and Jalen Pettis has been there all night long. Chase Patton, Russell Pearson. That's it's just been a great player. show up front for the Dowling Catholic defense. No question about it, as Dowling on a first down play from their own 20-yard line, they give us the swagger, and Zach with the short gain, and now we got an injured Valley Tiger with five minutes and one second remaining here in the fourth quarter. Dowling leading 22 to nothing over the Valley Tigers. Uh, Maroons led 22 to nothing at halftime, no scoring in that uh, uh, third quarter. And uh, Dave Marcoulier, uh, I know you had a uh, conversation earlier with uh, yeah. uh, a, a, a Dowling uh, a family, a Dowling alumnus, and uh, we tell lost, the story. We lost a big-time uh, Dowling uh, fan this year. He's He's been to every Dowling game since I don't know when. I'm talking about Jim Herman. I believe he is the grandfather of um, which Herman is playing? Will Herman? Will is, Herman. Is he yep. the one playing? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the Hermans have been going through Dowling. They've had a number of kids go through Dowling High School uh, throughout the years, I believe, clear back in the 80s and 90s. But uh, Jim was just an a outstanding Dowling fan, a, a great person, and it's a wonderful family. His wife worked at St. Augustine's for years. So uh, our thoughts go out to the Herman family. They certainly do, and uh, I got a chance to meet Jim back in the early 90s when I was uh, doing the broadcast, and my mom passed away, and uh, he was at the funeral, and I did not know him. He introduced himself, and yeah. I've known him and his daughters, and uh, uh, it's tremendous Dowling booster. As you know, Dave, being at most of the events when you were an administrator yeah. there, you, you'd see Jim, and he'd be at all the football games right up here in the stands with us, and uh, tremendous family, tremendous person. It was, yeah, was he's the nicest Herman. man in the world. All right, uh, injury on the one of the Dowling, or rather one of the Valley players injured. They're helping him off to the uh, near sideline right in front of us where the uh, uh, Valley sideline is tonight, and that is number 55, uh, Nedj Naba, who is injured, and he's one of the defensive linemen. And I'll tell you what, he and uh, the big guy up there. He's played well tonight. Yeah, he, he really has. Now, sure, Washington, they are a force on that defensive line. The Maroons have done a pretty good job offensively handling that. Bow back to live action. They'll wind the clock as the Maroons will let the clock wind down as the play right. clock <laughs> gets at 30 seconds. Well, and the play <laughs> clock just, or the, pl the other clock just now started. So the so Maroons, Dowling got a break there. Yeah, they certainly did. And uh, the Maroons okay. are going to let the play clock go down. It's third or second out. Excuse me. Second and nine Dowling from their own 21. 22 nothing Maroons. Four and a half minutes remaining. Play clock down to five. And Steingraber, quarterback, fakes the handoff, and he throws a low pass caught in the slot that time. No, they're is, calling it incomplete, It's Louis Mark. Brooks, and they're going to wave it up. One umpire, or one referee said, yeah, skipped into his hands incomplete. So it'll bring up third and nine. 
Yeah, I'm surprised to uh, see that when yeah. I thought Dowling would want to keep this clock running here. That's the whole key. The Maroons haven't shown a whole lot of uh, offense here in the second half. You can credit Valley for that. The Maroons have kind of taken their playbook out. We haven't heard Mac Anderson's <laughs> no, we name in a while or Louis Brooks. We haven't heard Koa Thompson. We haven't heard any of them. It's just been uh, kind of grind the clock out. Maroons with the lead. Handoff goes to Schwager, and he bowls his way and finally twisted down about the 24-yard line. He'll gain four or bring up fourth and six for Maroons. Got clock will continue to run, and Valley will get the ball with about three and a half minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. It looks like both teams, Mark, have two timeouts. Not that Dowling will need theirs, but Valley's got two timeouts to use. And it'll bring I'm surprised they didn't take one there. Yeah, fourth and six, and uh, yeah, the Tigers are going to be content. We'll get you up, get caught up on some scores. How about this one up there in Waukee? Waukee looking for their first win after being beaten last week. It's Ankeny 17 and Waukee 14 late in the second half. And that's an interesting game because Waukee now, if they lose that game, they will go 0-2. And now a timeout called. And we'll take one ourselves. 3.33 remaining here in the fourth quarter from Valley Stadium in West Des Moines. Dowling 22, Valley nothing. Here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Central Bank is proud to support the unmatched spirit of sportsmanship and hard work exemplified by our local athletes. We're fans of high school sports and the way the big game and hometown team rally a community. Best of luck to all of today's competitors. Play hard, have fun, and make something great happen. Central Bank, member FDIC. In Iowa, we grow corn, but to us, corn is more than a cash crop. It's part of who we are. Corn supports our livestock, helping our animals thrive. Corn fuels us. Ethanol powers our state as we push towards a clean, burning future. Corn nourishes us. It gives us an abundance of good food that nourishes our families, helps our student athletes grow stronger. In Iowa, we grow corn. But the truth is, corn grows Iowa. Godfather's Pizza's Autumn Feast. A medium specialty pizza, a medium pepperoni pizza, and my new caramel apple streusel with Twix candy pieces. Get yours today. Stadium has timeout call. That might be also the sanitation timeout they call now with uh, at the eight minute and four the minute COVID. mark. The COVID timeout. I don't know the appropriate term, but it's a two minute break and they've extended the timeout called fourth and six Dowling. The Maroons are down to their final timeout, leading 22 to nothing over Valley. As uh, next week, Valley has a bye and then they travel to fourth rank Southeast Polk. Two weeks from tonight. Oh, that'll be a good game. And Dowling travels to Johnston next Friday night for their game. All right. Fourth down is we're underway. Fourth and six Maroons. Calvert into punt. Koa Thompson in as a long snapper from their own 24-yard line. Southeast Polk leading 29-0. Calvert a little uh, rugby-style run-up. And it's fielded by Valley at the 35. And that is on the near side. And run out of bounds is Mahoney at the 40. Austin Klein over to force them out. So Valley will start 324 left in the game. They will start on their 40-yard line, Mark. First and 10 Tigers from their own 40. Let's go down to the Dowling sideline for John Chido. Johnny, I asked you earlier, there's so many things to talk about with the Valley defense, but let's not forget the Dowling offense in that first half, putting up 22 points when they had uh, chances from their defense. Yeah, uh, they sure did, and, and they ran a lot of combination routes and got some guys in space and made some nice uh, catches, but you got to credit the, the quarterbacks for Dowling making good reads and, and allowing to, to get the, the wide receivers in a, in a good position. That is true, and now back to throw is Wood Rubley, and he loses the football again. Ball still loose, big lineman for Valley. Had it, lost it, and I think he got it back right about the 33-yard line. So after that is all said and done, they'll lose seven, with will the Tigers. And it'll bring up second and 17 from their own 33-yard line. I tell you what really broke all that up was Chase Patton. Chase Pat Patton just whipped his man and got into Rubley as quickly as possible. Uh, we talked about uh, Patton last week. As, man. Uh, Coach, uh, Coach Woodley did, or Co Coach Wilson did, excuse me, as uh, Chase was somebody, he said, our offense can't block him. And you can imagine what the Valley offenses went through tonight. And he just made the tackle on that play also. I tell you, Chase is a heck of a ball player, and he's just been all over the field tonight. So Williams on the carry gets it up to the 38-yard line, so he gains five.
five on the play. They bring up third and 12 Valley. Score update, uh, Southeast Polk shutting out uh, Ankeny Centennial 29 to nothing in the fourth quarter. And now, once again, Rubley back to throw. Nowhere to go, nowhere to throw. Sacked again. And uh, who was on the bottom of that pile? That was Rubes. Russell Pearson and it was uh, Jalen Pettis. Both of them. Back to the Russell 30. Pearson's name's been called numerous times, tonight. especially here in the second half, Dave. Yeah, I tell you what, when you talk talk look at the defensive lineup and the names, we've been calling every one of them all night long, Mark. Just an outstanding job by this defense. All right, fourth and fifteen for Valley, and they're going for it from their own thirty-five. Ruby back to throw, fires the ball downfield, pass is caught, first down. Nice reception that time as a. Rubley had a little bit of time, oh, and he angled boy. it down to Mahoney for the first down at the Dowling 44-yard line. That was a heck of a pass by Rubley to Mahoney. Mahoney's another Division I athlete for Valley. Hey, he's an Ivy Leaguer. He yes. already accepted oh, Princeton, his. that's right. Yeah, he already accepted. Back to throw Rubley from the Dowling 44, and he fires it out. Pass is caught by Mahoney at the inside the 40 of Dowling down to the 38-yard line, gain of six. They're going back to this short game, but pretty quick here. They're going to try and pop one deep, Mark. Reminder, stay tuned for the post-game show here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. John Chad will be on the Dowling sideline. He'll have comments from head coach uh, Tom Wilson. We'll have all the statistics. So hope you stay tuned after the game. Here's a, little, here's a quick pass to the near sideline. This time somebody other than Mahoney, and that's Cale Nessheim with the catch for a first down. Carson Kriegshauser came awfully close to intercepting that ball. And one more step and he would have had it. Gain of 10 for Nesheim on the reception for Valley. And the final minute of the, the contest. First and 10 Valley from the Dowling 28. 22 to nothing Maroons. Back to throw is Rubley. Fires downfield. Pass is caught. Big guy is reared and he's got the catch inside the 20. And he bowls his way down to the 17. That's good enough for a Tiger first down. A gain of 11 for the big guy, Eli Reardon. And you know these Dolly Maroon defensive players really want this shutout, Mark. <laughs> Back to throw Rubley with 35 seconds remaining. He'll keep the football. Angling for the far sideline, wants to get out of bounds, and he does right about the 13-yard line as he gains five. So I believe that was Krieghauser who came up and just missed making the tackle. Which would have made the clock continue to run. Right. Instead, it goes out of bounds, and Rubley stops the clock with 33 seconds. And Maroon's trying to preserve the shutout. Leading 22 to nothing. So Rubley again a five. This is the deepest Valley's been in Dowling territory tonight. They got all the way to the 18-yard line last series. Two receivers to the right for Valley as they go left to right in front of us towards the south end zone here. One receiver to the right, or to the left rather. Back to throw Rubley. Pass is complete to uh, Reardon, and he's down in near the five-yard line. They're going to spot it on the five for a gain at eight, and it's first and goal Valley for the first time tonight, first and goal at the Dowling Five. Yeah, you just knew they were going to go to Reardon there where he lines up, and uh, that, that big target going into the middle, you just knew they were going to throw the ball to him. Timeout called on the field by Valley, and we will take one ourselves with 28 seconds remaining. Here in the fourth quarter, Dowling 22, the Valley Tigers nothing. Back in one minute here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Obsessively, relentlessly, that's what you can always expect, even when faced with the unexpected. It's a service we take seriously, providing comfort in the rain, tools to help you save, a helping hand along the way, and from a safe distance away. Delivering the energy you need while going the extra mile. Regardless of the times, our team remains committed to you. Central Bank is proud to support the unmatched spirit of sportsmanship and hard work exemplified by our local athletes. We're fans of high school sports and the way the big game and hometown team rally a community. Best of luck to all of today's competitors. Play hard. Have fun and make something great happen. Central Bank, member FDIC. Here at uh, Valley Stadium, uh, Rubley back to throw and 
Throws to Mahoney in the end zone, overthrew him, incomplete. That stops the clock with 23 seconds remaining in the contest. Dowling trying to preserve the shutout, leading 22 to nothing over Valley. Tigers trying to get something on the board to bring up a second and goal from the Dowling Five here, Dave Marcoulier. Yeah, real nice coverage that time by the Dowling secondary, and Rubley really didn't have anyone to throw it to and threw it high and out of bounds. I believe to stop the clock, Mark. Yeah, 11th play now of the Dow- of the Valley Drive that started back in their own 40 at the three and a half minute mark, and now Rubley inside handoff goes to Williams. Jalen trying to find some room and goes a lot of east west. Can't go north and south. I can't go south, and that'll uh, bring him down for a loss back at the 10 yard line. Loss of five, and Valley stops the clock for their final timeout with 15 seconds remaining, and we'll take a break. Dowling 22 to nothing over Valley. 15 seconds remaining. Back in one minute here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Hi, I'm Chris from Fireplace Superstore, and this has been a crazy year. We might just run out of furniture, but we still have a great selection right now. We have wicker, we have fire pits, we have poly, and if you want something for your deck this year, you should come see us right now. Still have the greatest selection in Iowa at the best prices. Fireplace Superstore, 109th and Douglas, just west of Homemade. Focus. To define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor, and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. And welcome back to Valley Stadium. Third and 10 now, third and goal rather for Valley on the 10 yard line of Dowling. And now Rubley back to throw, fires in the end zone. The ball is tipped and incomplete as he overthrew his intended receiver, well covered by the Austin Dowling Klein. defensive back and safety and that was the intended receiver Mahoney who couldn't bring it down to bring up fourth and goal Valley from the Dowling 10 and this will be the final play for Valley in the contest trailing 22 to nothing to the Maroons. Austin Klein on the coverage and guess who else was back there Will Herman. (laughs) (laughs) Will's had a heck of a game. I understand there's some Herman celebrating up at Clear Lake tonight low snap fourth and goal and now Rubley is going to be hit. He's going to be sacked again ah. in the backfield. Ah. How about that? Ah. That is Chase Patton. Chase Patton. And that'll do it. What a way to end the game. Final play. Well, it won't be the <laughs> final play of the game with six seconds left. Look at the Dowling fans over oh there. Oh, my. I don't think Johnny Chato can hear us. Johnny, uh, is there a little of excitement over there on the visitor sideline? Yeah, and you know what's funny you say that is because throughout this whole game with limited fans, it still felt electric, you know. You still couldn't hear I don't know if that was Daniel Craig for the fans, but it still was an exciting ball game, and, and the fans were really into it, and especially defensively this whole second half. Has oh, been I can't awesome. wait. Can't wait till you get caught up with uh, Coach Wilson. We'll get to that. Dowling now will just uh, take a knee here as uh, the Maroons now will take a knee, and that'll do it. Valley can't stop the clock, and that's the final. Dowling 22, the Valley Tigers nothing. Congratulations to head coach Tom Wilson as the Maroons improved to 2-0, and and they knock off the preseason and week one, number one team, the Valley Tigers, 22 to nothing. The Maroons rank third. And with Ankeny holds on, they were just uh, winning over Waukee at last report. Uh, Dowling and Ankeny will occupy the top two stop spots. And, you know, we don't have the handshakes here, Dave. Dowling going off to their locker room, Valley to theirs. But hats off to the Maroons and head coach Tom Wilson. A 22 nothing win, all done offensively in the first half. The defense was a scoreless for both teams. I tell you, it was an unbelievable game by the Dowling Maroons. I bet there aren't many people that saw the Dowling Indianola game predict that this would happen tonight. And I, I might have to say I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I knew Dowling all withstands it. You never try and predict a Dowling Valley game, but I tell you what, 22 nothing shutout is something that I did not think I see would see because Valley is so doggone loaded this they, year. They certainly are. Let's take a look at our statistics. We'll get Coach Seacrift uh, off to to, uh, uh, to the locker room as uh, 
Total yardage tonight, Dowling with 232 yards of total offense, Valley with 225. Maroons passed the ball for 180 yards, Valley with 207 yards passing. The Tigers rushed the ball for just 18 yards tonight, uh, Dave Marcoulier. Dowling with 52 yards on the ground. And uh, first downs, Dowling with 11 first downs in the contest. Valley ended up with 19 first downs. Uh, Jake Steingraber for the Maroons, 9 out of 14 passing, 146 yards and a touchdown. And Jackson Smolik coming in, 5 out of 11 passing for 34 yards and one interception. For uh, Valley, uh, Jake Rubley was 22 of 37, 207 yards and two interceptions on the night and no touchdowns. Leading rusher for the Maroons, Zach Swagger with 15 carries, 40 yards and a touchdown. Jake Steingraber. Uh, one carry for six yards, and Cam Middleton, three carries for six yards. For Valley, Jaden Williams is their leading ball carrier, 25 times, just 41 yards, average a yard and a half tonight uh, on offense for uh, Valley. Matt Mahoney, two carries for two yards. Uh, Jake Rubley, 12 carries for negative 20 yards. Leading receiver for Dowling, Mac Anderson, all in the first half, four catches, 105 yards, and a touchdown. Louis Brooks, three catches. 34 yards and a touchdown. Louie also had a punt return for 54 yards and a touchdown. Koa Thompson, three catches for 24 yards to lead the Maroons. And Jalen Thompson, two catches for 17 yards. Matt Mahoney, the leading receiver for Valley, eight catches, 87 yards. Cale Nessheim, six catches for 52 yards. Eli Reardon, the big tight end, six catches for 47 yards. And uh, Drew Henderson, one catch for 16 yards to lead the Valley Tigers. So, again, uh, Dowling with a 22-0 win. Coach Wilson now talking with, uh, with the, uh, the Dowling team as the Maroons amassed 232 yards of total offense, Valley with 225. Our halftime score was 22-0, and our final score was 22-0. And uh, that's a look at some of the numbers there, Mr. Mark Coulier, as the, the Dowling team now uh, celebrating around their coach. And we're going to take a break, come back with post-game activity from the field. John Chida will catch up with head coach Tom Wilson when we return. Final score, Dowling 22, the Valley Tigers nothing here on Iowa Catholic Radio and the Central Iowa Sports Network. Focus. To define what is most important and commit yourself fully. It's why at Fairway, only the best meat makes the cut. Our fresh fish is full of flavor and our produce is picked with incredible care. It's why we have fewer aisles, greater savings, and the most personal service. At Fairway, our focus is and always will be giving you the best in meat and grocery. Hi, I'm Joe the Car Guy with Westside Auto. I'm excited to tell you about our new lifetime oil change plan. When you purchase our plan, you'll never have to pay for an oil change again. If you get a different car, simply transfer the plan over. If that car's oil needs are different than your original plan, just pay the difference. It couldn't be simpler. You won't have to worry about inflation or prices going up. Give us a call at Westside Auto Pros to get details on the lifetime oil change plan. And remember, when I say lifetime, I mean your lifetime, not just your cars. Moyne, final score tonight, Dowling 22, the Valley Tigers nothing, alongside Dave Marcouli. I'm Mark Amadale. Thanks for tuning in to the postgame show here on Iowa Catholic Radio and our friends at Central Iowa Sports Network who stream the game through the uh, webcast, and we uh, streamed it also through the audio. And uh, not the biggest crowd tonight because they were limited in seating. 1,200 uh, people let in in an 8,000-seat stadium. Dave, I thought I saw you last year down there on the railing about four rows deep. I thought you'd get a better seat last year, but I, we upgraded you tonight. Yeah, you did. In fact, this <laughs> may have been the only way I could have gotten into the game, so do you think I was going to turn you down? <laughs> <laughs> we're glad to have you here. Matt Maindring will return. I know you can get back to your journeys to Minnesota when I interrupted your trip last uh, weekend saying, hey, what are you doing next Friday? And we appreciate you. First of all, we appreciate Margaret letting you come out tonight. And I'm glad you drove your car instead of your motorcycle. Yeah, believe me, Margaret, Margaret would want me here. <laughs> <laughs> it's a choice of this or at home, though. All right, I come to these Dowling games, and I just love them. Well, our score at halftime was 22 to nothing, and our final score ended up being 22 to nothing as Dowling pitches the shutout. And uh, Coach uh, Tom Wilson now will join us uh, here in the postgame show. Mark Amadale, Dave Marcouli, and John Chido down on the uh, Dowling sideline. And <laughs> we just had Coach, and now you, 
I think he uh, went to another follow-up interview. Let's recap the scoring before a coach is ready. Uh, Dowling scored in the first half in the first quarter. Mac Anderson on a seven-yard touchdown pass from quarterback uh, uh, Jake Steingraber. The extra point was uh, good, and Dowling led 7 to nothing on a nine-play, 45-yard drive. And then later in the first quarter, Zach Swagger on a one-yard run. The extra point was no good. Uh, Dowling capping off a four-play, 83-yard drive, led uh, 13 to nothing. We moved to the second quarter. Jake Calvert on a... Uh, Field goal of 30 yards, uh, put the score at 16-0 Dowling, ending up a 12-play 46-yard drive. And then seven and a half minutes remaining, Louis Brooks on a 54-yard punt return. Uh, extra point was no good, and Dowling led 22 to nothing. ended up being our final score. And let's go down to uh, John Chido. And, John, you have uh, head coach uh, Tom Wilson there. And uh, take it away, Johnny. Oh, coach is going to be over here just a second here, Mark. Uh, He's saying hello to his parents and. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, I, f I forgot about that. We'll we'll give you some time and. Uh, here he is, right here. All right, uh, head coach Tom Wilson with John Chido. Johnny, take it away. Well, coach, congratulations! Uh, great win, uh, great start to the season. Off to a two and zero start. First half, uh, we were able to put twenty two points on the board. The defense put a lot of pressure on the quarterback, starting with that front four. Uh, your thoughts? Oh, uh, they did. I thought. Uh, Really, we came out and were playing very well, uh, especially offensive, defensively, uh, in the first half. And as I mentioned, you've got to finish the ball game. And you know, offensively, I'm not so sure that we did. But uh, you know, we wanted to run clock. And and uh, really, when we have so much confidence, you know, defensively, especially now, uh, after you see something like that, and you know, the, so many kids, I thought contributed. I mean, it's a entire defense that, that it takes to slow something like that down and you know I had a uh, conversation uh, with Pettis early in the week and I said you know they, they should be worried about you um, and you know he showed that he's a really really good player and and uh, I don't think he gets much notoriety but maybe he will now. Yeah he, he had a heck of a ball game he was all over uh, Max Deary started with that penetration the quarterback would uh, move the pocket and Jalen was right there uh, all the time, and, and we were talking about it throughout the game. It was hard to call out just one single player because so many players defensively were, were around the football, and it was just uh, awesome to see. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at the turnovers, uh, you know, and there was a couple of fumbles in there, but, you know, the pick by Blake Anderson and the, the pick by Krieg Sauser, uh, those were fantastic plays. And, you know, I, I Krieg Sauser supporting on the outside in the run game I thought was really, really important in this game. So, like you said, it's – it's not one or two guys. It's all those guys, and you know, it's like a hockey line shift when our when our uh, D line goes in there and trying to keep people fresh. And you know, we brought Mata over to the defensive side this week, and and he flashed. Uh, we've been trying to make an offensive lineman out of him, and and uh, we needed some help there with Lynch going down, and uh, it proved to be pretty good. Uh, Mark Dave, you have a question for Coach? Well, sure do. Tom, congratulations. I know he has some family in town, so we'll try to keep this short. But I'll tell you what, from week one to week two, uh, a lot of improvement, a lot of excitement. It all happened the first half offensively due to your defense. And you've got to be pretty pleased with how your offense responded uh, right from the get-go. Well, it was. And, you know, we used uh, Mac Anderson a little bit more. As you can see, that's what they were giving us. I thought he made some big plays. Obviously, we know uh, Louie can make plays. Um, you know, we, uh, we felt we were going to get able to get Jalen Thompson opened up, and, and uh, that was really kind of the, some of the plan in the, in the second half. And, you know, Koa has a couple of good catches in there. So um, it's going to take all of them, and, and we just have to continue to focus on improving each and every week. And, and uh, that's really the, the big deal for us is, you know, we know from past years winning this ball game doesn't guarantee anything. So um, we gotta, we got to worry about getting better for next week. Coach Wilson, congratulations. That's, a, that's always a great win when I get to watch Dowling Valley game, and, and especially when Dowling comes out on top. But, you know, I want to ask you about the offensive line. I thought even when I was at practice, the difference of earlier in the week to tonight was quite a step forward. Talk a little bit about the offensive line as a group. Well, I, I think you're right. Uh, we were concerned about that. You know, obviously 52 is going to Miami of Ohio. Uh, 91 caught our attention. Naba, one of their interior guys, you know, they're pretty good players. And we were concerned about being able to hold up in there. And, and really in the first half, I thought we were fantastic. Um, they started bringing more pressure and things like that in the second half and kind of selling out. But I agree. I think they, they took some steps forward and, and, uh, 
you know, losing Olsen there in the second half. Caleb Saylor came, comes in and, uh, you know, he's a terrific kid, um, but that's a pretty tough spot to come in. And, and uh, but he came in and, and uh, happy for him doing that. And we got to get Olsen healthy. And so this uh, offensive line can continue to move forward. Right. Not only that offensive line, but you take a look at uh, your receiving core, Mac Anderson, I don't believe he caught a pass last week, but boy, did Mac come through tonight. And, and once again, in practice, he was just outstanding. So I, th I think you, you found another pretty good receiver there. Yeah, Mac's a, a phenomenal kid. He's, you know, we, we would all like to have more Mac Andersons, to be honest with you. And I'm, I'm glad that he got to show what he can do because he is capable of that. We knew he was. Um, you know, obviously, Louis is our number one guy. He's the playmaker that made plays a year ago. But uh, I think Mac's going to continue to to have a phenomenal year for us. Coach Wilson, thanks for joining us here in the post game show. Enjoy the victory. I know it's Johnston next week, but uh, enjoy this one. All right, thank you very much. Tom Wilson, the Dowling Catholic head football coach, as the Maroons win it twenty-two to nothing over the Valley Tigers. Our thanks to John Chido on the sidelines tonight with that interview and Dave Marcoulier. You can go right down the defensive list, and you can go through the offense in that first half. What a what a balanced attack it was for Dowling. Something we didn't see last week, but boy, what an improvement from week one to week two. Who, who was talking about that in the pregame show? Didn't we talk about that? Yeah, I, I tell you what, they're just completely different teams, and I, I don't know if I have the answer as to why, but uh, because they're only one four days older <laughs> that's right it, they uh it was the first game last week for for both sides of the ball for for valley and dowling and a lot of new young kids playing there but boy did they step up and get the job done and don't ever predict a dowling valley game because you're going <laughs> to probably lose that's right <laughs> all right final score dowling 22 valley nothing along with dave marcouli i'm mark amadale john chide on the dowling sideline we'll come back for final thoughts along with the folks from the central iowa sports network and iowa catholic radio save thousands now at schottenkirk chevy Waukee. 15% off 2020 Equinox and 2020 Trax or 0% for 84 months. 15% off 2020 Sonic and 2020 Spark. WalkieChevy.com. 12% off 2020 Blazer. 10% off 2020 Colorado. Up to $15,000 off new 2020 Suburban. We're in a position to give you more for your trade. As always, we're a partner you can count on. Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. WalkieChevy.com. In Iowa, we grow corn, but to us, corn is more than a cash crop. It's part of who we are. Corn supports our livestock, helping our animals thrive. Corn fuels us. Ethanol powers our state as we push towards a clean, burning future. Corn nourishes us. It gives us an abundance of good food that nourishes our families, helps our student athletes grow stronger. In Iowa, we grow corn. But the truth is, corn grows Iowa. And we're back here at the Valley Stadium. Mark Amadale, Dave Marcoulier, John Chidel. Uh, final thoughts after uh, Dowling's win, 22 to nothing over the Valley Tigers. So number three upsets number one. Uh, other score we had earlier was the uh, Waukee Warriors upsetting number two Ankeny, 21-17 at Waukee Stadium. So Waukee now goes to one and one on the season. Ankeny falls to one and one. Uh, Southeast Polk at last report all over uh, the uh, Ankeny Centennial Jaguars. Uh, last report, we had uh, Southeast Polk with a uh, big lead there, uh, and it was 29 nothing Polk. So uh, both Ankeny teams go down tonight, apparently, as uh, Waukee upset uh, number two Ankeny Hawks, 21-17. Uh, Other games tonight, Urbandale at uh, Ames. Uh, no report from that game. Lincoln is at Johnston, East at Roosevelt. That game being played at Drake Stadium. Fort Dodge, Sioux City East. That game being played at Sergeant Bluff, Luton. Marshalltown at Newton. Council Bluffs, Lincoln at Des Moines North. And Ottumwa at Oskaloosa. Uh, Hoover and Mason City had the night off. Next week, Dowling travels to Johnston. And the Valley Tigers have a bye next week. Tigers uh, will play in two weeks as number one Valley will be at number four Southeast Polk two weeks from tonight. And uh, Dave Marcouli. As we wrap up uh, tonight's game, what a game we had. What an exciting first half it was defensively and offensively. Both teams' uh, defenses took over in the second half, but uh, 
for Dowling, they made big steps from last week. The young team grew up. Uh, they were down a starter. Lynch did not play tonight for Dowling at tight end. Also, a backup lineman did not play on the offensive side. And, of course, uh, Carson Boyle, starting corner for Dowling, did not play. But through all that, the Bruins overcame a very talented Valley defense, yeah. Valley Valley team. And Lynch, Lynch is a huge loss to oh. that offensive front because they've been focusing on getting the ball to him because he's so dangerous. He's an outstanding blocker, too. And losing him and, and still being able to accomplish – uh, what they did is, is just unbelievable. And, you know, offensively and defensively, it, it's just a matter of uh, Dowling turning into a team because you can't pick out one particular individual, for example, on the defense that played outstanding because there are 11 that I could name right now that really played well. So as a team, Dowling really came together offensively. Also that offensive line. Backs did a great job reading quarterbacks, uh, called a nice game, got their reads. Just a great game. You couldn't ask for anything better. And can you imagine if there was a crowd here? I don't think we would have heard Johnny tonight, but Johnny, the, the Dowling uh, uh, student body or the folks that were there, not student body, did a tremendous job. It looked pretty exciting down there. Well, I, I had to spend most of my corner down at the south end zone, and the students and the fans lined behind the fence and – in the south end zone we're, of the church, yeah. Really into it, loud. Uh, the speaker was right there. The, the, the crowd uh, that was in the stands was engaged. I mean, I could not tell that it was a half-empty stadium. It was, it was pretty <laughs> impressive. You cool. know, and we're up here, and we look down, and we're high and uh, above the valley crowd, so we really can't see them. Right. Whether there's 5,000 or two, you can't tell. So I would agree with you, John. Yeah. It, it was hard to tell. This place holds 8,000. We've seen 10 here for Dowling Valley, and we've seen that at Drake Stadium. One, one year we had like 13,000. The line went all the way uh, down Forest Avenue. But uh, tonight a little bit different due to the COVID restrictions, and uh, hats off to uh, uh, Brad Rose at Valley, the athletic director, Michael Connor, the acting athletic director here at Dowling during the football season, and Tom Wilson did a great job of just getting everything organized. Well, I was noticing how they were shuffling uh – the fans in from one gate they're using multiple gates on both sides and it was they really were organized uh, how they did it and you couldn't even tell that there was something different uh, which is always nice uh, being in that position when you're trying to organize something like that you're always worried about what could happen but you couldn't tell anything different and uh, yeah. uh, hats off to Brad Rose and, and uh Coach O.C. and everybody in the Dowling administration. Well, it's good to bring the older administration back, come out of retirement. Uh, We've got a pandemic pandemic going on, uh, Dave Marcoulli, and you come out in it, and we get you to the elevator. Well, you didn't take the elevator up. You were huffing and puffing coming up all those stairs. I I know what I needed, the exercise. (laughs) but Coming out of retirement, thanks. i got to get back to my basement fast now. I see. That's what's going on. With this COVID. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. Lock. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least Margaret keeps telling me that's where I should go. That's funny. Well, we appreciate you sitting in for uh, Mr. Mandring. He'll be well, back next week. Well, it was fun. Break. It was fun. Yeah, it week. was fun having you. It is lifetime, but I don't know if Valley's going to take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, glad to have you here, Dave, and it's good to see you. Look great, and uh, for Thanks. our listeners and our viewers here on the Central Iowa Sports Network, uh, good to have you here, and uh, glad to have your your coach's percep- perspective. He, we didn't run the trap tonight, did we? No did, traps. No trap. We didn't I don't hear. know if you could run the trap inside tonight. <laughs> no, that would be a little tough. That defensive line for Valley inside. They were, yeah, they were they pretty were, stout. They are pretty stout. They yeah. certainly was. All right, well. Dave, we'll talk to you down the road. Thanks for sitting in. And, Johnny, we'll see you next Friday night at uh, Johnston. Hopefully everything will go without a hitch. Yeah. Nice job out of you and uh, all our listeners and fans. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Best of luck to the Dowling 8th grade team, 8th grade football team. They make their debut, Dave Marcoulier, Tuesday night. What time, Johnny? Uh, 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock at? At Dowling. At Dowling, their home opener. How many can get into that one? You know they haven't they haven't said, but if it I would imagine it'd be like the freshmen will be uh, parents maybe two two parents and uh, they'll separate uh, the visitor fans up on the hill there and the, the home fans and the could I stands. pretend I'm an assistant coach yeah, absolutely. or something? Get in there. Come on, now, I need help because I'm coaching defense this year. No, I didn't say I wanted to. Coach. I, I need could some I help pretend because, uh, <laughs> just stand there. I'm on an island you, that I've never been on. I'll I'm stand with a pan- mic and uh, never talk. Yeah, there's a <laughs> pandemic, Dave. There's a big pandemic, but uh, yeah, we can. You, we can laminate a administrator pass for Dave for all home games at Dowling. How about that, Johnny? There you Get go. him in. There you are. 
There you I go. have one already, but <laughs> yeah, thank you. Got the D coordinator right here. He went from I offense am. to defense yeah. this year. This ought to be great. Oh, he did. Oh, it's yeah. Be a little he different. A <laughs> little different. Okay. So we know who to yell at from yeah. if up in the stands. Mark and I will be up in oh, the corner. That'll be that'll be awesome. But best of luck to Dowling Fresh or eighth grade team. Do you know how you have you always have a new team every year? Yeah. And you always want to know what their personality is going to be. Right. And each year, <laughs> it seems like it's harder and harder to find the identity of right. a team and what type of personality and try to get these kids to talk or right or <laughs> any type of enthusiasm and and trying different ideas to get them to get engaged but it you know what especially when you aren't in school and you don't yes. get to know these kids yeah, yeah you're in a real difficult uh, you can't get to know their personalities except two yeah, hours two every hours night a, yeah and it's, and then you're yelling at them half the time yeah it's, it's tough <laughs> That'll happen Tuesday, uh, Tuesday night during the, the yeah. freshman game. Hey, don't forget, J.V. Lou uh, plays a Monday night. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, 3 o'clock Monday. 3 o'clock yeah. Monday afternoon. Yeah. yeah. So He's already starting in with some stuff here. Uh, check your phone, Mr. Chido. But well, uh, you know, J.V. Lou uh, Cataldo. It's, it's good yeah. he has a game. Plus, he tore his Achilles because his golf game was terrible to begin with. So, there's always a big tournament on Labor Day. And he usually plays his best golf there, but he only plays by himself kind because he always has practice. And, he says he has a marker and uh, comes in with this great this score, but he never plays in that final round. So, if you knew what these coaches <laughs> get, are doing, especially the lower level coaches, it's really something, Mr. Mark Cooley. That would never happen when you were there. Absolutely never. not. These guys are on each other. We were focused. So, JV Lou, three o'clock. The Dowling JV team <laughs> takes on Valley uh, at the, the Dowling Field on uh, on oh. Monday, Monday afternoon, Labor Day afternoon. I had to get yeah. that in. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Have okay. a great week. Have a safe Labor Day weekend. Yeah. Dave, you drove your car, not the motorcycle. Nope, we're I'll all make good. it. All right. We'll see you guys. I, I got I got, I got, some reads to do, and thanks for all, all right. you guys do. I appreciate it. And that's uh, John Scheidel, Dave Marculia. That'll wrap up our broadcast here from Valley Stadium. Our thanks to Athletic Director Tom Wilson at Dowling. Uh, of course, uh, Jared Seifert keep, keeping us with the uh, uh, stats throughout the game. Our halftime guest was Andy Jepson, the president of the Catholic Football League, and we appreciate having Andy on talking about uh, the, the great job the Catholic Football League is doing. Our student producer tonight is for Iowa Catholic Radio, Jeff Pickett. Our thanks to Anna from uh, uh, Central Iowa Sports Network producing everything here. Her and the staff and Pete Tarpey's group from – uh, CISN Sport Webcasting Team, Anna, Clayton, Nick, and Justin did a tremendous job tonight. Also, Jennifer here. Uh, we appreciate them. Our thanks to the folks from Valley High School, administrators, uh, including Athletic Director Brad Rose, uh, Valley uh, Head Football Coach Gary Swenson and his staff. Next up for Valley, in two weeks, they play uh, at Southeast Polk, ranked number four. And uh, next week, Valley has a bye, but they play uh, Friday, September 18th at Southeast Polk. Dowling's next broadcast will be our next broadcast next Friday night, September 11th, week three of the high school football season, number three Dowling at Johnston, pregame 6.30, kickoff 7 o'clock. For my broadcast partners tonight, Dave Marcouli and John Chido, I'm Mark Amadale. Thanks for listening to the official radio network of Dowling Catholic Sports and Activities, Iowa Catholic Radio, and our thanks to the Central Iowa Sports Network webcasting team led by Pete Tarpey and their group. Final score for the final time, Dowling 22, Valley nothing. For everybody involved, have a safe and blessed faith-filled evening.